from the hot air balloon capital of the world. This is Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by XTO Energy, a subsidiary of ExxonMobil. The 48th edition of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Canon is happening now in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And now, live and direct from the rooftop studio at Balloon Fiesta Park, here are the hosts of Balloon Fiesta Live, Glenn Moyer and Art Lloyd Jr. And good morning once again. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, around the world. And uh, here on Balloon Fiesta Park, you are looking live at the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Canon. And you're watching us on Balloon Fiesta Live. And we are powered by XTO, a subsidiary of Exxon Mobil. And um, I'm Glenn Moyer, and good morning again to my colleague, Art Lord Jr. Good morning, Glenn. Hey, we've got a special treat for everybody. We have our live team over at Pilot's Briefing. It's just about to start over there, so we're going to be able to listen in for part of Pilot's Briefing this morning. We'll get to see the, the uh, all of the information that's passed on to the group of pilots prior to flight. And there's, uh, there's, there's uh, Henry getting monster. started, Henry, so let's yeah. listen in. Persons from Balloon Fiesta Live. And I want each of you to wave to anybody and everybody that you may know that's out in the World Wide Web out there because we are live right now on Balloon Fiesta Live. There we go. Give a shout out to anybody that you want to. Hey, Mark! That's right. That's right. Hey, where's my, where's my friend Ken? Ken, put a hat on, please, and a glare. Okay. All right. So yeah, so we are going to broadcast a little bit of the uh, this morning's briefing live. But again, please tell all your friends and even yourself, uh, go back and look at the archived uh, tapings that are on there. So fantastic coverage is being done. How about yesterday? What a day, huh? How many people got to the river? Uh, how many people did a splash and dash? How many people did a dunk and dash? It was a great day, great day. We had a lot of uh, a lot of happy folks here on the field and a lot of happy passengers that were able to fly with you and the crew members. Hey, looking through the internet last night, I saw this as a headline in one of the uh, local media. And here's the caption reads, 17 reasons why this is the most photographic event in the world. We are the most photographic event in the world. So put up around there. All right, just a quick update on the gas balloons. All teams are down with the exception of Team 1, and that's Andy and Kristoff from the U.S., and they are preparing to land as we speak. As soon as they've got enough daylight and enough land underneath them that's not wet, they are going to land. Um, and we expect to have an update later, but again, tune into the uh, Facebook, I mean, excuse me, the ARBF website or the uh, app, and you'll have complete details on that. Right, we're we're going to start off this morning with Brad with weather. Okay. Here he comes. I know. I haven't even said anything yet. Hey, Brad did ask me back here. He said he wants to know where those ballistic cases that we were giving out. He wants to put a couple of them on him. I haven't even said anything yet. Wow. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. So here's. Uh, yeah, so here's a picture of yesterday from uh, Livingston, Montana. And it, there's a little bit of foreshadowing in this photo because, uh, because that, is, that air mass is going to be working its way down to our region here later on today. So we'll go ahead and go to the next picture. This is currently what was going on, and you probably noticed it's really, really nice and warm out there this morning. Enjoy it while it lasts because it's not going to be with us too much longer. This is an image from NOAA, uh, and they're over my right shoulder, or your guys' left. And they're taking a lot of data for us this week, and they're going to be talking about it this morning over in the Discovery Center at 11 o'clock. So there's a little shameless plug there. You can learn a lot more about the data that they're uh, taking and what they're using it for in terms of atmospheric research. But I want to explain this plot. Basically what it is is it's our inversion, and you can see just a few hundred feet above the surface there is an inversion. However, if you look at the contrast in temperature between the surface and, and what's uh, there, it's only a few degrees Celsius. So we're running right around 60 degrees. That plot shows that the inversion temperature, and it's, you can see how it's shallowed with time as you go from left to right. That inversion temperature is probably about uh, like 62, 63 degrees, something like that. And so once we warm up above that, what's above the inversion will start to mix down. And if we go to the next plot, 
that will show that shows the wind versus height. In, and so you can see that, that in, in the, color, the shading is actually the wind speed. So you've got the arrow showing the wind direction, and then you've got the, uh, the shading in, as indicating the wind speed. And you can see that, that, that just where the inversion was, immediately above it, it, it turns into that um, uh, yellow in, in the green uh, color shading, which basically indicates right around 15 knots or so. So immediately above the inversion, which is running somewhere around 150 feet uh, above the surface or so, uh, it, it jumps up to 15 knots, and we're seeing that on the profile. Okay, so I'm going to start with the latest, uh, latest uh, observations around the area. Maybe if my phone wants to work. Okay, so Double Eagle is currently 48 degrees, 2.32, and a wind 220 at 8 knots. Uh, barometric pressure is 29.93 inches of mercury. Down at Sunport is 53 degrees, 2.31, and uh, relative humidity of 40%. Winds are out of the east, 080 at four knots, and the barometric pressure is 29.91 inches of mercury, and both uh, stations are reporting clear sky. So basically what we're looking at for the forecast half-wise, uh, double, over Double Eagle, they're forecasting 240 at seven knots, visibility greater than six miles, clear skies uh, through eight o'clock. After eight o'clock, winds picking up to 11 knots out of 240 again, uh, visibility greater than 6 miles, sky conditions clear. Then after 10 o'clock this morning, winds 260 at 15 gusts to 23 knots, and visibility greater than 6 miles, and sky conditions clear. Similar trends at uh, Sunport down to the south. Uh, currently, they're forecasting variable winds at 4 knots, visibility greater than 6 miles, sky conditions clear. After 9 o'clock, uh, winds picking up 210 at 8 knots, uh, uh, visibility greater than six miles and sky conditions clear. And then at 11 o'clock, they have those gusty winds starting to develop 250 at 14 gusts to 22, visibility greater than six miles and sky conditions clear. Basically, uh, here you can see on the weather map what's going on. You've got a, a, a large area of low pressure across the central portion of the country. Um, and there is an associated cold front with that just poised to our north. That's gonna be working its way through throughout mid, mid to late morning here. Once that front does come through, we'll see those gusty winds, much like we've seen in the forecast, start to develop, and they'll get even stronger throughout the day today. So I uh, just wanted to see her. I don't know if this is going to load. It always seems to have problems. But in general, we're running generally in the 50s uh, across the region, um, and generally we have that southerly flow. Um, here's the detect wind, so you can see. Uh, we did, uh, it, over the past hour or so, see a, a little spike and in increase in, in the winds out of the southeast, and then uh, and then um, they're certainly stronger once you get above that inversion. So right around that couple hundred feet above the inversion, or above the, above the surface, winds are generally running in that 15, and then they increase from there going up to 20 to 25 knots. With that said, here is the table with the wind information for the area. Um, and I'll just, we ran a pie ball uh, just a little bit ago, and I'm going to read you the pie ball information. So you've got the DTAC winds with the latest information, and then I'm going to read you the pie ball winds as well, so you have winds a lot. Okay, let's see here. There it goes. All right, at, at 300 feet, we had a wind of 200 degrees at, at 15 knots. 200 degrees at 15 knots. 500 feet is 215 at 21 knots. 700 feet is 221 at 23 knots. 900 feet is 2, uh, 220 at 22 knots. Uh, the 1100 feet is 224 at 18 knots. 1300 feet is 222 at 22 knots. Uh, 1500 feet is 231 at 19 knots. 1900 feet is 235 at 19 knots, 2100 feet is 233 at 21 knots, 2500 feet is 250 at 17 knots, and we'll jump up to 3000 feet is 254 at 24 knots. So the, the thing that's different about this morning that we didn't have yesterday is yesterday we had that nice layer uh, in the five to 700 foot range that took you guys out uh, towards Rio Rancho. Uh, we do not have anything this morning that's going to be out of the southeast unless you are below the inversion. So if you're below the inversion early, we'll have that wind out of the southeast, um, but that should mix out fairly quickly, bringing down those southwesterly winds. 
Um, and so I expect basically south to southwest winds, so basically taking you up to the, toward the Pueblo Reservation, or even further to the north, uh, north and west and east of here, basically taking you toward the mountain. So that's basically what I expect throughout the day. Like I said, gusty winds uh, developing this afternoon. Tomorrow's outlook looks really, really good, uh, but cold. So just make sure you bring your hats and mittens because you'll certainly need it. With that, I have a, we're gonna do the pie ball. And my weather helper this morning is Declan Moen. Uh, and he is eight years old from South Korea. And his dad is in the Air Force. All right. <laughs> You're gonna, you might want to go to the other side, because otherwise, I'm going to hit the tower. <laughs> because your wind's going this way. <laughs> All right. Okay. With that said, is there a launch director give, giving us permission to launch? Go ahead. Go ahead, go. Ah! Oh! So that's uh, a little bit of pilot's briefing this morning. <laughs> it will yeah. go on, and there's a, a number of other things that will take place over there. They're going to get instructions on what's uh, the game plan for today now that they've heard what the now weather they've heard is. they've what the weather situation is, and exactly. it's, uh, it's a bit... On the edge, it sounds like this morning. It's on the edge of that of, of the waiver. The direction takes us north, where there isn't a lot of landing sites. Yep. So we'll have to see what the official call is on that. And we know it's going to get windier as we go through the morning. Yeah. So that's a consideration too. We have to start looking at what are the wind conditions going to be when the balloons are going to be looking to land. It's not just about taking off. It's about getting back on the well, ground. Well, you heard Brad say that you can kind of go to the northwest if you stay below the inversion. That's a change in the temperature right. level. And that was at about 150 feet. He also said that was going to mix away soon. That means the upper winds are going to come down and that direction is going to go away. So the first few balloons that get up could go that way, but that's about it. Um, that should go away very quickly. And so as that direction goes away, the speed is coming up. Exactly. Because of the mixing down of the of the winds that we heard uh, higher up. And there is a there is some speed up there. We heard that in his briefing. He talked about the uh, detect winds. There is a wind radar machine that normally is at one of our local airports out at Double Eagle. We actually move it here to Balloon Fiesta Park for Balloon Fiesta, and it gives us it does radar of wind so it's shooting straight up in the sky looking for particles in the uh, atmosphere uh -huh. to be able to give us what uh, what is happening up there and it updates every five minutes and so we love it here during the rest of the year and of course during balloon fiesta as well uh, and so as of uh, three minutes and 38 seconds ago the winds at 250 feet off the ground were 13 knots um, taking us from uh, from the south, right out as Brad was talking about, right out towards the Indian Reservation and swinging a little bit over towards the Sandia Mountains. There's not much landing out there. You go up just a little bit higher, it goes to 14, and then 15, and 16, etc. You kind of heard them go through all of that. So uh, a very detailed and very specific weather briefing given to our pilots this morning, uh, which is also why, and we're seeing our Dawn Patrol balloons, we had uh, a few of them stand up, and we still have a couple of them standing up. They have elected not to fly this morning. Right. And uh, they were going to stand their balloons up and keep them up as soon as long as they can. You can even see there's Rick Jones, the closest one to us, and Michael Scott, the one in the background yeah, there. Right. Uh, we can see that even standing on the ground, they're rocking just they're a rocking little bit. They're rocking a bit, uh, yeah. yeah. Look at the crowd down there, but though. Yeah. They, they've got quite nice a few folks crowd. there. And we, the stars would be uh, Tim Taylor's uh, D, is it D3 or D4? D3. D3. Yeah. yeah. And uh, today, of course, is also Kids' Day, so we expect a huge crowd out here uh, today and uh, each uh, uh, kid, ahead. sorry, I <laughs> was searching for a word there. Uh, 12 and under. 12 and under that uh, comes in the fiesta this morning gets a nice little goodie pack. And Art, I think you've got one here I've with us. I've got one. 
You're, I not, got down, you're not under 12. I, got I, know down, that's, I know that. I got down on my knees and begged. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm going to be good now. Oh, no, yeah, right, right, uh, right. No, so uh, there, yes, for every kid 12 and under, all you have to do is head up near the main stage, just a little south of it. They've got a great goodie bag here, uh, live to the full. Um, from Philip 66. Philip 66 right. But inside the bag is yes. where the goodies show up. Uh, first off, cereal okay. from General Mills. Breakfast. Um, the milk is not in the bag, but they're handing out but milk. They're handing out, out milk. Well. Yeah, yeah, so you don't, have to, you don't have to eat the cereal dry. Uh, I've got a nice uh, coloring thing from KOB. Okay. I've got from Canon, I've got an entire creative pack here that you can make your oh, own look balloons at that. and things like that. That's cool. Uh, we've got. Um, a set of balloon cards for you. Of course, a spoon to eat your cereal, eat cereal with. with. Very good. And good. Uh, this one is really cool. There's this nice little pouch here from Delta Dental. And inside the pouch, you get toothpaste, Ooh. toothbrush, and even dental, dental floss. floss. All right. So you can uh, get started I'm with some I good might, habits. Uh, I might steal that toothpaste because I actually ran out this morning, and, and that's on my grocery list for today. Thank you. There you go, sir. Cool. There you go. So, thanks to all of our sponsors, Delta Denta, Philip 66, KOB TV, and all the others that have contributed to our kid packs. Those are all free for every kid 12 and under. They are just south of the main stage. If you're out here on the field, stop by and pick those up. Speaking you mentioned the trading cards. I think we're going in the same direction here. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> so, uh, I just checked with my team, and we have lots of the Balloon Fiesta Live trading we cards do. left as well. Yeah. So, if you see us anywhere around the field or you want to come by the rooftop studio, our production trailer, which is right down below us, we've got these great uh, Balloon Fiesta Live trading cards. Remind you that we are on Facebook and on YouTube and, of course, on BalloonFiesta.com. And, and on the back, on the back, you learn a little bit about yeah, who we are, who we are, what we've been doing along all the lines there. Yeah. Of course, you'll be able to go back and watch and see what's happening. Well, I'm having a bad yeah. hair day. I just, <laughs> just notice that. Where's makeup? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I don't have ever have bad hair days. I know that. You yes. have to have. You have I to know. have hair to have bad hair days. Well, and, and I don't wear a cap because it messes up my hair. But this morning, maybe I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I got one in the car. I'll go get it. Okay. For you. So we are here on uh, Balloon Fiesta Live. Brought to you, powered by XTO, a subsidiary of Exxon Mobil. The XTO folks, by the way, the big bosses, the ones that are signing the checks, oh, yeah. they're in town today. In oh. fact, they've been in town for a couple of days, uh, but more of them are here. They're out here this morning. Uh, one of them was actually out on that chase yesterday when we were talking to the pilot. Oh, yeah, uh, right. And, yeah, and she was she was on the ground listening to that conversation back and forth. Right. So excited about that. And then, of course, they were both stood up right here in front of us and great shots of them taking yeah, it off. Yeah, so we had an excellent video of that yesterday. And it you were saying that, that they were impressed because they thought we had 40,000 views. Yes. And you corrected them. <laughs> it's 440,000 yeah. as of last night. So we're, we're approaching uh, a half a million views. And after that shout out at Pilot's Briefing this morning, where Henry Rosenbaum, our uh, balloon meister, told everybody to check in and wave. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the uh, hopefully those, those numbers, numbers will, will go, go even higher. higher. It's been funny. I've been looking at our Facebook feed already, reading some of the comments, and um, weather is going to be quite a, dis a subject of discussion today, given the approaching cold front and the winds that are going to come through Albuquerque uh, today with it um, and through the night. Then, as you said, tomorrow morning, the forecast, as we heard from um, our uh, balloon guru, Brad Tmeyer, it looks really, really good, but cold. But cold. Um, and I've been reading some of the comments. People have been, oh, it's 75 and sunny here, and it's 70 degrees in the morning, and it's warm. And somebody from Denver said it's 21. <laughs> I think we didn't get to see the picture, but I think the picture he showed of Montana was uh, had snow on the ground. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of that up there, and that cold front is moving in from the north. And we're so. expecting, uh, actually, tomorrow morning here on the rooftop studio, it will probably be freezing or just below. I was. Uh, I think our heaters are going to be doing um, extra duty just tomorrow. Just be morning. glad you're not on the top of the mountain to the east of us, the Sandias, because. Well, true. That's the, another 5,000 feet up. They're expecting it to be 16 up oh, there tomorrow morning. That's cold. Yep. So. That's cold. So it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, uh, yeah. But you know what? It's been pretty warm. It's been nice all week. It's so actually uh, been uh, unseasonably warm, yeah. it seems like. I, I heard one of the local TV weather guys talking about how these were you know, kind of normal temperatures. Uh, but it, and after 30 years of being out here, th this fiesta so far has seemed 
really unseasonably warm. I haven't worn a, a jacket yet. Um, I've had just the fleece liner from the jacket right. on. And I'm and, wearing the outside without the fleece. Right, and, and so we're, we're kind of, we, we should get together here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll and, and I've had- parts tomorrow. Right, I've had typically a sweater or maybe a sweatshirt on underneath, uh, but, uh, but generally it has been quite comfortable. And by, and by the time that we finish, we wrap, wrap up about 9.30, I'm climbing out of all these layers yeah. because it yeah. really is, has been warming up quite nicely. Uh, but tomorrow, um, yeah, expect to hear our teeth chattering because it's going to be cold up here. Might have to bring the gloves and the earmuffs out as well, although these great headsets do well, a great job of keeping our ears You know, warm. I thought about that just the other day. I found these great earmuffs a couple of years ago that, that they're, they just snap on over your ear. Oh, There's yeah, no band I remember. That you goes, brought, you remember? brought them last year. Yeah, well, I forgot those, and I was thinking, oh, darn, I forgot those. And I thought, well, wait a minute. Now we use these great headsets instead of the microphones we used to use, and so my ears will be fine, and I've got my big tartan scarf, and I have two pair of gloves with me and more layers than I can probably fit on. I'll, I'll look like Bimbo Bear up here <laughs> if I put all those layers on. So I think I'll be able to survive. Um, but it does get, and especially up here, because we're on a, we're we're at really the same level as the tops of the balloons. We are. And if there's any wind chill at all, um, it gets pretty chilly up here on the rooftop because we're out. We are out of doors on an open rooftop, and um, it's the best seat in the house. But when it gets cold, it gets cold. So. so today, with the wind coming from the south, our lovely backdrop featuring Balloon Fiesta Live and XTO is going to protect us from some of that breeze. Well, but we tomorrow, so. it'll yeah. be back to the typical drainage from north to south here as well. I've just been watching uh, Rick Jones out there and a couple other guys with their burners, and I'm actually, s the, the balloon's leaning a little more and yeah. the flames going a little bit more here, but things do tend to change a little bit, but we know what the forecast is. We heard it directly from Brad Tmeyer that uh, it's going to be a little well, bit of an iffy day for us to get you the balloon. So. Yeah, you can see the, the wind there pushing the against the, in, uh, yeah. the upwind side of the balloon there and trying to collapse the envelope a bit. And so this is a, the type of day when you have to be really careful with your burner because if you reach up and, and burn about this time without looking and the wind is pushing that in, he may be actually be deflating. I think, I he, think is. he is now, right? Yeah, yep, but there we go. when that happens, uh, even with a fully inflated balloon, the wind can do that. And if you, if you aren't paying attention and you reach up and burn at the wrong time, and the wind is pushing in the the back side or the upwind side of the uh, uh, of the envelope, you can end up with a nice picture window right in the side of the balloon where you didn't have one before. I chatted early in the week with uh, Dave Icorn, who uh, manages the local repair station uh -huh. here, one of those, and uh, asked him how he was doing. He says, oh, I'm tired, it was a long day. And I said, yeah, and he said, yeah, we were busy. Someone uh, wasn't paying attention, and it wasn't even that breezy, but someone wasn't paying attention and burned it and took seven panels. That's basically seven sections going up right. the side there. Each one of those each squares, one of those squares rectangles so would be a panel. Right there you can count one, two, two three, three, four, four five, That's about a third of the way up the balloon. That's, yep, yeah. so, and uh, all being replaced. So there's uh, some of our uh, Dawn Patrol guys doing what we would call a candlestick. Uh, firing off the burner so we can at least light up the sky. <coughs> we right. got a little bit of indication which direction the winds are going as well. Let's talk a little bit about the schedule today and okay. maybe for the rest of the sure. week in case things uh, do move forward here. So we were scheduled for a dawn patrol um, as we've uh, been watching and talking about. It's, uh, the winds are not conducive for that to have a safe flight. Remember, they're going to be up, if they were to go up at 6, they're up for an hour before the sun is up, an That's hour right. plus before the sun is up and you just can't see anything on the ground when it's dark. And so we need to be able to do that. There's our yellow flag. That means we're kind of on hold for right now. And actually, I, I love the shot of the uh, scissor lift right there by the main stage in the lower right of the screen. Right, yeah. That's yeah. our uh, stage camera right there. Anyway, that the yellow flag means we're on hold. And so the idea was after Dawn Patrol to have our Gris Krispy Kreme guys stand up, our ride balloons stand up and fly away. It is Special Shapes Day as well as Kids Day here at Balloon Fiesta. Yeah, today is the day that ideally we will get to see uh, those 104 special shapes that are registered for our shapes rodeos and our glodeos in the evenings. Um, it may be a bit tricky today because special shapes, more so even, as you know, are more so more. even than the, uh, the round balloons, are very, very wind susceptible. Because they are shapes, uh, particularly when flying, uh, I can remember years ago when uh, uh, Balloon Hilda, remember the witch riding yes. the broom, yeah, yep. would fly, and with a little bit of wind, that broom would act like a rudder, and it would just literally windmill them around, yep. and they would fly through the sky spinning around as the wind was catching them. Um, special shapes, 
require really much less wind in most conditions. They require more calmer conditions uh, because they are very susceptible to uh, wind. So it may be a bit more tricky today, even than normal. If today were just a mass ascension day with the round balloons, right. um, we might be able to do more than we may be able to do with special shapes. And of course, we, you and I don't know yet what the plan is. We'll have to wait and find out uh, once the officials put their heads together, take a look at the weather, and uh, come up with a plan of action. Well, they've been looking at the weather and talking about this. Oh. When I got here at 4 o'clock, oh, yeah, Brad was briefing um, Henry and Maury and all the rest of the top safety officials. So they were having these discussions when I got here at 4 o'clock this morning. Um, and they continue to monitor. We have a number of weather stations around the park and in outlying areas where we might be flying, depending on the day and the wind conditions. Exactly. So there's an entire weather team. Brad, Brad is just the... Uh, He's the tip of the iceberg, as it were. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the head of the... Uh, what, well, yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's the guy that has to stand up and... Uh, take credit or blame for whatever the weather might yeah, be. Yeah, he's might the point doing. man, you might say. That's but it. uh, But it's not just uh, him that's gathering all that data. He has uh, a team of people with him, and then they have a great many resources uh, that they reach out to all around the area and across the country, actually. I, I think he mentioned NOAA. He did NOAA mention weather. NOAA weather. Um, yeah. They've been out here. I mean, they're out here anyway. They've been uh, bringing some drones out. They've got some drones that will allow them to go up to some incredible altitude with weather sensing equipment uh -huh. and send that back in real time. So they could put the drone up at a couple of hundred feet, they can go up a couple thousand feet and check and see what the differences are uh, as we go through the day. Anyway, we were talking about special shapes. It is special shapes day today. Yeah. Our balloon of the day is Wells Fargo. And the game plan would be for those competitive pilots in the regular shape balloons to fly out of here stand the special shape balloons up, and then the competitors to be somewhere else and fly in. How much of that we'll get to get, uh, be able to get to do today, we'll have to see. But that's the game plan for today, and again, exactly the same thing for, for tomorrow. tomorrow. And, <coughs> and we know tomorrow looks really good, as it you heard does. Brad say. Yeah. Tomorrow morning yeah. looks looks fine. Um, if, we're, if, if, our, uh, if our programming is interrupted today, it would be because of weather, uh, but it's going to be a brief delay or a brief interruption, I guess you would say. Um, because we know that tomorrow looks fine, and then I think we're pretty good going into the final weekend. Um, it's just a question of uh, the timing of this front coming through and um, its impact on us this morning and uh, potentially on the rodeo glodeo this evening. So again, there's the yellow flag, but we can see all the other flags all kind of uh, flopping around there a yeah. little bit. You can see there's there's some breeze out there this morning, although honestly, it's um, up here on the rooftop, we really don't feel that much of it. It's coming. Uh, it's our backdrop. It's our backdrop that's yeah. protecting us, yeah, because yeah. the wind's out of the south this morning, but uh, we're a bit protected. Tonight on the schedule, and uh, is a, a drop in by the skydiving team of Fast Tracks. At five o'clock, they would bring the flag in. At 6.30, we will go live here on Balloon Fiesta Live, 6.30 Mountain Time. Our Balloon Glow, or our Glodeo actually, because it will be the special shapes tonight, still scheduled to get started shortly after that. And then at 7.30, Fast Tracks would jump back in with their pyrotechnic show. And, and we'll shortly follow after that, that up. is our Afterglow fireworks. fireworks. Yeah, at about uh, 8 o'clock usually. So um, while, yes, yeah, so, and the fireworks uh, go off unless the winds get above 35. That is not what I'm seeing in the forecast, so we should at least uh, be able to see that and possibly uh, all the other activities. But again, this is a one-day thing coming through. Someone just commented about the horse carriage balloon of Wells Fargo. It's a stagecoach. <coughs> Excuse me. Center stage. It's not a horse carriage. It's a stagecoach, center stage. Beth Wright-Smith is uh, typically the pilot of that balloon. She is. She's been flying one of the regular round Wells Fargo balloon shapes the last few days. Has she? Okay. Because we pulled Ted Mays off the round balloon to put him in the XTO balloon. Oh, for right, us. right. Because our pilot got inadvertently yeah. grounded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we won't uh, we won't tease him too much more about that. No, but, uh, well, he's he's been a great sport. It wasn't his it. fault. It was no, his crew. Yeah, his I crew. Mean, yeah, it was the his crew, crew is uh, <laughs> just a whole lot of fun. I've. Uh, Managed to go down there a few maybe times. Maybe a after little too much it. fun on that person. <coughs> I think maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Just a bit. So Look at the double burners going over there and the heat going up. And Look the at light. yeah, you can yeah. see the heat waves in the light there. That's yeah. really pretty awesome. And all of the uh, all the people around there. Look at look at that. I yes. think he heard us again. And, and yes, <laughs> Yvette, the uh, the event is on hold. We are on hold for wind right now, and um, 
yellow flag is up. So we are on hold and we're watching to see uh, what the officials may come up with. Um, this, this approaching cold front is going to be a real issue for us today. And, and it's just a question of whether the winds become manageable enough for us to get a flight off this morning or not. And then tonight, uh, you know, I mean, we have to be honest, it, it doesn't look good for tonight, but you never know. Exactly, exactly. Um, we've all seen forecasts of uh, yeah, you know, major yeah. storms and all this other stuff, and then you come out and it's a beautiful night. Uh, yeah, nothing happens. So, yeah, um, yeah we, is, we uh, never say never, and we, and we don't cancel anything until it's until it's time. I mean, right. everything stays on. Uh, obviously, if if there's indication later today that um, that it is going to be a massive cold front come through and the winds are just howling, then they'll make that call perhaps uh, at that time. But um, we would never say this morning tonight's canceled. Um, no, no, uh, unless you know the apocalypse is about to strike, <laughs> because you just and, and that's the thing about ballooning. People always and that people want to know, well, what are you going to do tomorrow morning? Well, we don't know because we always make a decision based on the weather at that very moment. We have to look and see what are the conditions right at this moment to make a decision about whether we fly and what type of flying we do. And you know, balloon pilots throughout the year, not just not just they're going to go fun fly. They'll look at the weather four or five days out, thinking yeah. about flying on Saturday or Sunday. They'll right. keep watching Tuesday, Wednesday. They might say, well, you know, Saturday's going to look better for a flight than Sunday. Maybe we'll go Saturday this weekend. Let the crew know so that they can kind of yep. put it on their schedule. And then um, very, a, a, a lot of pilots just say, you know what, even if it looks really windy the night before, I, I, we're going to go out and take a look at it yeah. and go out there. And you know what? If you get out there and you can't fly, you go to breakfast. Exactly. Yeah. But it's still a, a social sport. And we like to say we'd rather be on the ground wishing we were up there than up there wishing we were on the yeah. ground. And I've been in, in, the, in both situations yeah, uh, at some too. point. But yeah, I know when I was flying actively, that burner yeah, I used to uh, I'd start looking at weather about Wednesday if I were thinking of flying on the weekend. And, and getting more and more detailed reports as the on Thursday and Friday night generally was when we'd make the decision. And even if it looked questionable, I mean, if it was obvious we wouldn't be able to fly on Saturday morning, then I'd call the crew and we'd stand down. But if it was just questionable, going to be on the edge, right. maybe going to be too windy, maybe not. Might be low fog, maybe not. Then generally we would get up and go out exactly. and take a look. And, and because... You know, invariably, if you slept in, you called it off and you slept in, you'd wake up and it'd be a beautiful morning. You'd, oh, Why darn, I did not fly. Did fly. Yeah. So you, you just don't make those decisions uh, too far in advance. You really have to uh, work with what the current conditions give you. And the only way you know that is to get up and go look. That's it. Um, and you were talking about looking at Wednesday and kind of letting the crew. I remember having to get on the telephone and call my crew and yeah. say, we're looking at this. It would take you two hours to get through all the crew. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now, of course, with... Uh, Cell phones and texting, et cetera, like that. You can set up. You a send the group text out. One, punch one, one button, button, and everybody yeah. knows what's uh, going on. And you can update it. You can say on Wednesday, I'm looking at this. Right. You could send them another one on Thursday. Yeah, and, I used uh, to do the same thing. You know, you'd have to make six or seven phone calls uh, to each of your individual crew members to say, Hey, you know, I'm looking at Saturday morning. Are you available? And okay, and, and you know, and then as you updated things again, you'd have to go back and make five, six, seven phone calls every time you wanted to pass on new information to your crew now I kind of hope to get their voicemails so I can <laughs> move on sometimes because <laughs> everybody I we had great crew and I'm, I'm not picking on them at all but uh, yeah sometimes it's uh, well just to send that message out you know crew go. people are you know crew people are people too they are, <laughs> and, they are. and they have opinions and, and they're typically um, you know if they've been particularly if they're your regular crew and, and we all have those folks you know, they understand weather. They know the impact it has on ballooning. Well, they've and, got the same weather and, and apps on their phone as you a do. A lot of them are as interested in the weather as you are as a pilot, and they look and they check and they have an opinion, and, and they'll say, well, did you see this reported? Did you see that? Yes. Or I saw where it was going to be, yes. you know, a little windy. Have you looked at that? And and uh, and that's all good in, input. And one of the things that the FAR say is you have to make yourself available um, aware all. of all available all information. Yes. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'll, I'll wake up and I'll call flight service and see what they tell me. Well, nowadays with the Internet, we have access to so much more weather information than in the early days. Just getting up and phoning uh, flight service and getting a weather briefing really isn't adequate. You're not making yourself available of all or aware of all the available information. And, uh, and a lot of times I had, you know, crew people that were even more avid than me as a pilot yes. about weather. Oh, definitely. And they would look at some sources that I didn't look at routinely or whatever and would bring to my attention something. So, um, yeah, so um, it, it, it's a matter of, uh, it, and that's what 
you know that's the importance of your crew. They're, you're all you are a part of a team, and everyone has input. Um, although it's ultimately the pilot's decision, but it's good to get that input from other sources and get you know it's like having a, a fresh set of eyes look at something, and someone may see you know. If one person sees seven to 10 miles an hour of wind in one viewpoint or vantage, and someone else will look at seven to 10 miles per hour and see it entirely differently. And that opens uh, the reason for a discussion. And, and those, those are good things. They are. Uh, that helps you to make wise pilot decisions. And that's what you have to do to be safe at this sport. That's exactly right. And, and the other thing is the winds change. You may have looked at it at six o'clock. I'm the crew guy, I look at it at 6.15 or 6.30 and there's been an update. Exactly. I've seen the update, you have I have not, I've, I've exactly. I've it out to you. Yeah, you're right. And so. I go back then and look and say, oh, you know what? You're, you're right. right, it has updated. It has updated yeah. and thank you for that. Hey, let's take a moment and uh, update America's Challenge. Yeah. Our gas balloon race that has uh, left out of here on Monday night. We were and talking so, about uh, yesterday, the last man standing would probably be uh, Andy Caton and um, that uh, appears to be the appears case. Appears to be the case, yeah, okay. as they did fly through the night last night. They did. So uh, most of the teams landed uh, yesterday, actually all of them except Andy. And Andy was kind of in second place, if you will, kind of in distance going into the night. And I was having discussions with uh, some of my friends last night about, so is he going to fly far enough to get that? And so now it's 45 kilometers, it's 30 kilometers. Right. And then, oh, he just passed him just by passed 11. Him. And so can we bring up the map too, guys, as well? Yeah, we could take a look at and, that. And uh, take a look and see where, see where, the uh, where he landed. is. He was basically approaching Hudson Bay this morning. Oh, my gosh. Yes. When you look at the map, and when we see if we could get that up. It, they made he, some distance last night. He has then. definitely gone there. Last I looked, his speed was dropping, his altitude was dropping, and we actually heard. Well, we heard Brad say they were planning yeah. to land about dawn this morning as soon as, soon as they, they had enough daylight. Some light and some dry And some spots. dry land. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, you know, he's got to find some that's dry critical. land before he gets the water, too. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. I can remember years ago uh, working the command post for one of Dr. Bill Bussey's uh, world record flights and he was up at very high altitude and was looking at what he thought was a cloud bank uh -huh. and realized very late that that was actually the shore of the Atlantic Ocean and oh, wow. he had and you could look at his uh, the flight track and he's flying along kind of in a straight line at altitude and there is this oh blank moment where he realized he was about to go out and get feet wet and he descended rapidly yeah. and landed just uh, a mile or two away from the shore um, so, yeah, you don't want to get feet wet, but look at that. So we saw in the wider shot before we zoomed in, we saw that the uh, French team kind of was start, started right up along the along kind the of Great north Lakes. west side yeah. of Lake Superior there. My friend last Barbara night, yeah, I was going to say, last night when I looked in, Andy was down uh, just a bit behind, still behind the French team, uh, down around the Great Lakes. So, I want to say they it have was made some great pretty distance. much after dark before he actually passed them, but the French did land last night. And so Andy did decide to fly through the day, uh, through the night, and now he's that one way up there. Yep, our cursor's up there. There you go. Team one, Andy Caton, and uh, from Poland, Christoph is apart. Andy told us before they started the inflation, he was going to be the last one to stand up and the last one to land. Yep. True to his word, that's exactly what has happened. He was determined they were going to win this this year. They've been second a few times. Multiple times. Both he and Kristoff flying together and separate. And separately have uh, ended up continue, second and yeah. third in past years, and they were determined. And, you know, remember Andy told us uh, in the live interview we had uh, on air the other night that the great thing about flying with Kristoff was that Kristoff didn't care if they destroyed the balloon. Yes. And so, you know, landing in trees or whatever may, it may take to make that extra little bit of distance, uh, they were willing to, to put it all at risk where some teams can't afford necessarily to easily replace no kid. a destroyed balloon. And um, apparently that was not an issue with, at least that's what Andy told us, and uh, uh, hopefully that won't happen. We would hate <laughs> to see anyone have to destroy their balloon to win a race. Exactly. But they, they were literally determined to go to the ultimate end to, to see if they couldn't bring home the, the trophy this time. When we've been watching their speeds throughout the race, they've been at the 35, 45 mile an hour speed range. Right. Um, and looking at uh, the current uh, piece on Andy and Christoph, um, they're down to less than 15 miles an hour now. They also were flying a few thousand feet off the ground. Now they're only at uh, 600 meters, which is still 1,800 feet right. or so. But uh, so they are definitely descending and slowing down. And as we heard from Randy Lefevre, the weather guy yesterday from our America's Challenge, the morning is the time you want to land because, because of that's the when the winds are the calmest. Yeah. Right, yeah. So after going so fast for so long, they're probably 
Well, and, we, and they know they know that they that all they have to do now is land safely. Right. They know they've won. The race. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, they've got the computer tracking the same as we do, and they know they've won the race. We as uh, long as they land on as long land. as they land on land. That's true. Uh, you know, and, but we also heard Andy tell us the other night. You know, we saw some of the teams traveling at 50, 60 miles per hour, and Andy had told us all along they were going to stay low. Right. And they were going to be the la last, last to land, up. and so that that uh, strategy seems to uh, seems to have worked well for them. And we saw that going out of here, eight of the nine basically stayed <laughs> within I don't know 50 miles of each other. Yeah, maybe Andy less. Andy kind of took a different track and right. was away from them, and so he was trailing basically the whole time. He's trailed the whole race, and right. part of that was difference in altitude yep. and the speeds at different altitude. Those that were grouped together at, at about the same altitudes were moving faster uh, than Andy was, and uh, and Andy was staying lower, and apparently, in this case, the, the tortoise and the hare, it appears that the tortoise had the right strategy. Because it has nothing to do with speed. It's Not at all. all it's distance. all distance. It's Absolutely. all distance. How far you can fly. And they were the only team, apparently, to fly through a third night. Yes. Uh, so they managed their ballast very well, very well. as well. Staying low, that uh, should help them a little bit. So we're seeing the Wells Fargo balloons stand up, our two regular shaped Wells Fargo balloons. We, uh, if winds cooperate and we're on hold to wait and see what happens there, we may or may not see the stagecoach, center stage. And so we're standing up. I'm just verifying that we're... So they're still scheduled for uh, 645, which is about four minutes away. I'm going to switch uh, channels here so that we can uh, get in with all the rest of them there. My uh, online friend, Lisa Carr, she's been following us all week and uh, is asking, uh, how are they going to get back from near the Hudson Bay? I don't see any roads up there. Um, well, one, they have a chase crew that's following them on whatever roads are available. And um, we've seen some interesting... <laughs> Uh, retrievals. We were talking about one just the other night where they had to haul the balloon out uh, using a, a pickup truck bed liner and a horse. Um, but uh, the team's always managed. We've never lost a team yet. <laughs> We've not left anybody out in the wilderness. Uh, they will find a way back. There typically are. Now, of course, we're getting up into the uh, frozen northwest, up into the tundra area, and uh, so who knows what might be available, but um, uh, they'll find a way. In worst case scenario, they'll helicopter out. That can be quite expensive. I remember some years ago flying up at Lake Powell, and uh, one team, we were told, whatever you do, don't go that direction, and one team did, and they literally had to spend the night out in the uh, high desert, um, and the next morning, that night, the, a helicopter team actually went out and dropped a tent and some supplies to them, uh, and they had to camp out that night, and then the, there was the next day before they could get a helicopter large enough uh, to go out and lift out the balloon equipment and uh, the balloon team. Uh, to get them back home, and I remember speaking to the pilot later that day once he was back at the uh, headquarters hotel, and we asked about, you know, well, gee, that must not have been cheap. What did it cost? And he just said, well, put it this way, all of my credit cards are now maxed out. So, um, yeah, worst case scenario, we would get a helicopter in there and, and get them out, but I don't, uh, I, I doubt we'll see anything that drastic take place. We'll find out a little bit later, but as I say, we've never left a team in the wilderness yet. I'm sure we won't do so this year. So the two Wells Fargo balloons have managed to uh, stand up. Uh, as you heard Art say a moment ago, they are our balloons of the day. Ideally, we would have center stage standing up with them. Uh, but again, those special shapes, as we discussed, much more susceptible to uh, winds. And uh, so for the moment, we're not seeing uh, center stage, but we do see their two round balloons. Wells Fargo been a sponsor with us for a number of years and really in several different uh, iterations uh, going way back to United New Mexico Bank and then um, Norwest. Norwest Banks and then uh, now Wells Fargo. Um, so they have a long history of uh, sponsorship and support here at Balloon Fiesta. And they take their balloons. I mean, they have a whole balloon fleet. We're seeing two. You just talked right. about center stage. They take those around the country yeah, where um, they have uh, presence. And so it, uh, on the back of their trading card, which I actually got one yesterday, talks about continuing to take smiles to their customers. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah I've seen uh, Beth Wright Smith has taken center stage to, uh, um, Wells Fargo has a big presence in Texas, and uh, I've seen uh, Beth there at uh, events like the Great Texas Balloon Race in Longview. Uh, she's been at the uh, uh, 
the InTouch Credit Union Plano Balloon Festival yes. before, uh, down at uh, back in the day, back down at uh, Ballooner Liftoff in Houston. Um, so y you're right. They're not just an Albuquerque-based uh, bank or balloon team. Those balloons do travel to represent the bank in those states where they have a big presence. So I just heard from the, our officials that we are even putting our uh, balloon of the day on hold. 6.45 is when we normally let them lift off, taking the colors into the sky and the performance of our <laughs> national anthem. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm just reading a comment here. It, uh, uh, Rachel Greathouse says, if balloons touching is called a kiss, then <laughs> these uh, poor Wells Fargo balloons are having a make, make out, out session. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Rachel. Well there said. There you go. That's, that's exactly That's probably it. one of the funniest comments we've had all week. That's brilliant. Yeah. And, uh, and yes, uh, to um, uh, Valerie Holbrook, uh, just above her, was asking, uh, saying, it looks windy. Are they flying this morning? Well, not yet. We are on, uh, as Art was just saying, we're on a weather hold. And uh, it's really not it bad right here on the surface. It's the not. The problem is that two, three hundred feet above that is going at 15 or 20 miles an hour. Uh, right. And just, uh, that's too fast. We know that that wind is going to mix down. If you uh, just joined us, we heard at Pilot's Briefing this morning, and we actually brought that to you live, that there, there's an inversion layer or a temperature change about 150 feet above the ground. And once you get above that inversion, the winds get very fast. And what happens as the day moves on, and usually fairly quickly, and they expect it to be even quicker this morning, that inversion level breaks down, those fast winds come down to the ground. In fact, just as I said, it was calm here on the field. I was going to say, we just, uh, the gust picked up. Yeah, the protection we were getting from our, our uh, backdrop is not as <laughs> nearly but as good as it was. there's the way to do it. Bring your blanket, yeah, yeah. come out and just uh, hang out with us here on Kids Day. It looks a bit like a Royal Stewart tartan blanket that person <laughs> has there, but that's probably more information well, than some people O'Donnell. need. Oh, yeah, there's O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so must be some Celtic visitors here with us. There you uh, go. Yeah, well, plus, people do come from everywhere. Plus, you know, Art, we have a waiver um, of oh, the yes. FAA regulations, and within that waiver, um, there are certain wind limitations, and if uh, at different altitudes, we have a, there's a certain level that we can fly in with the surface winds, and then I, and I'm not that familiar with the waiver any longer as I haven't flown here in a number of years, but at different altitudes, stepping up, say like 200 feet, 500 feet, 1,000 feet, there are set limits that if the wind is over that at any of those levels, then we can't fly because we are then outside of the waiver. And uh, I'm sure our officials are taking a look at that. And so it's not always an issue of what the surface winds are. It may well be within the waiver here. Let's say, for example, let's say it's seven miles per hour here on the surface. That's fine. But if at, you know, uh, say 750 feet, uh, it's 24 miles per hour, right. that may well be outside of what our waiver allows. And that would keep us on the ground. And I can't uh, remember if You can't just say, 15, well, okay, let's yeah. go fly, but everybody stay below 700 feet. You can't do that. Right. So. And it's kind of a trade-off there because we're supposed to, balloons and any aircraft other than helicopters, are supposed to stay at least 1,000 feet above any congested area. That's right. The waiver you're mentioning, uh, mentioning, the FAA gives us permission to waive that height requirement so we can fly so we can lower, fly lower right. under the condition that the wind speeds are, as you were describing. Are acceptable. And yes. if those winds are not, then that waiver then is no longer in force. Exactly. And, and then we're required to fly under standard FARs, and uh, and that's what, it, it all becomes an issue. And, and so, as I say, but as you were pointing out, rightly so, it's not always just what's the wind doing on the surface. Uh, we have to look at the wind at varying altitudes based upon what's allowed within the, wa uh, the waiver. And it then also is an issue, as we said early this morning as we signed on, um, it may be fine to launch but what's the wind going to be doing at 8 a.m. or 8.30 or 9 o'clock when, right. when five, 600 balloons are going to be trying to land? Uh, because um, that is, quite honestly, that's when most ballooning accidents happen is on approach to and during landing. And hard landings uh, are probably the highest category of uh, ballooning accidents and incidents when some, sometimes people are injured uh, because pilots are landing in high winds and have hard landings. And so we obviously, uh, safety is always our top concern. And so as a reason, uh, you know, so naturally then, we're, we're paying attention to not just as it, it, you know, it's one thing to say, yeah, let's get them in the air. Well, fine, we got to get them back on the ground safely. 
Uh, so we have to look at winds, not just at what's happening at this moment, but what are they going to be doing over the next few hours? And that's where a lot of this morning's issue is, uh, because we know the wind speeds are going to be mixing down. We already know they're up there at altitude. We know they're going to be mixing down to the lower altitudes. Winds on the surface are going to be picking up. And so that's a big part of the discussion that's going on right now as to whether or not we fly this morning. So we continue to be on hold, and uh, <laughs> at Kids Day, we're having uh, kids. Star Wars. <laughs> there we go. There's some, always something some you know, funny. Some lightsaber battles going on out there. Yeah. So whether you're having your lightsaber uh, battle, you're taking a nap like we saw early on, there's, of course, more than 75 different vendors along Main Street out there. About half of them are food. You can get any kind of food and drink that you'd like over there. And uh, just some great souvenirs. And look at the crowd. Look we have a great crowd. crowd here this wow. morning. Yep. Actually, we were talking about the right in the center at the top, there's the stagecoach chase vehicle. Yeah, well, and if you look over the top of the stagecoach uh, vehicle, there's look us. right there's, see that one bright spotlight right in the, the center. center of the screen? We're just below that. We're just in front of that, actually. There we are. So you we're can waving. See the, can you see us? You can see the building with a little bit of glass in it there, and then that little kind of a white square to the right side of it, if you're viewing the screen. We're, we're that little white square. That's our backdrop. I think they're going to see if they can zoom in. see if they in. can zoom. Well, they're other zooming way. the wrong other way. way. Other way. Other way. Other pan way. right. Pan right. Pan right. A little more. Keep going. Keep, keep going. Keep going. There you can see it. Yeah. And now probably if we start waving, yep, see, you can see me waving. The little blue spot right up on top. That's us, that's that little us blue waving. spot on the top yep. of that building. That is the rooftop studio. All those other folks are nice in, are nice and warm inside that glassed off section. We're out here in the cold. <laughs> but it's we not will be cold. in the morning. No, it's yeah, not this morning. It's, it's fine this morning. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll be, we'll be out in the cold. So in addition to all those other vendors over there that have souvenirs and food and stuff, there's yep. other great things out there. You just saw the Canon Hospitality Tent, but they have a tent that is like three times bigger than that oh, yeah. over on Main Street, where they are lending cameras and lenses and providing you expert instruction and support. I think they're cleaning your cameras, etc. They have lent us binoculars for our spotting to be able to use. Canon being the presenting sponsor for a number of years now, and uh, we are just thrilled and excited that Canon continues that relationship with us and provides the service to everyone. Yeah, I went by and met some of the Canon folks yesterday and uh, brought you a couple of Canon pens. You did, did a little Thank pen trading with them yesterday. Uh, my good friend, uh, Gennaro, who works for Canon, uh, I just missed him. I was trying to catch him and say goodbye. I knew he was leaving Wednesday, going back out to their offices in LA, and uh, I just missed him. He left yesterday morning before I could get down uh, to so, go see So this him. is actually a pretty good sign. Well, I was about to say that a moment ago as you were talking. I noticed that the red jackets are starting to show up on the official tower, which generally means they've probably come to some kind of a consensus decision as to what we're going to do, and now they're moving out into position on their tower, which is just a, a stone's throw away from us here on the rooftop studio where so they can oversee everything. The uh, gentleman that's doing the talking and, and the pointing, pointing that's there, that's Brad Br Tiemeyer. That's Brad Tiemeyer. The one that uh, just joined them was putting his backpack down. That's Tom Bueno. He's the chief safety official. And Tom has been uh, here on the tower with us during our evening events, during our evening glows. Mm -hmm. Brad, of course, the weatherman has been up here. We've interviewed him a few times, and he was the guy giving the weather briefing this morning. Uh, we don't yet see either of the balloon meisters, either Henry or Maury Sullivan, our assistant. Um, well, but the assistant chief launch director is coming up the steps. Now. Yeah, they are. There's more red jackets coming up the steps, so the officials are uh, um, moving into place. Okay, so, so Henry is on his way. Henry is on his way. That's our balloon meister is on his way to the South Tower, which is the officials tower. Um, they are ga they all gather up at the uh, pilot briefing tower, which is about midfield on the west side of the field. But during the uh, flights, uh, they operate from a tower location here at the south end of the field, literally uh, just uh, just really across the uh, driveway from uh, our rooftop studio here. And that was the uh, I mean, here's another shot of folks laying out the balloon, getting yep. it ready to go. So they're thinking we're going to stand up, possibly fly. Peg Lake Pete's trailer there. We know Peg Lake Pete guys. Yeah, that's uh, Dave and Kathy Reinecke uh, from Rantoul, Illinois, with Peg Lake Pete. Why does that look like Doug Gantz standing there? Not the yellow jacket, but the one to the right of him. Doesn't that look like Doug? The guy with the baseball cap no, on? No, no, the black jacket right there. Oh, no, that's... No, it's not. Uh, that's... Uh, from the side view, it kind of looked like I was like going to say, I thought that, was, that might have been Dave. I couldn't tell right there for a second. 
but yeah. um, but there's a balloon kind of uh, spread out. I believe that I would, if I were to guess, I would say I think that might be the POW That's MIA what balloon. Thinking. Um, That's what I was thinking. That would be my my guess, just from what I can see on the ground there. But you see a lot of crews. A lot of crews are active. They're getting them ready. So um, green tarp there, and now they're starting to pull that's that the one. That's the peg leg peak that is, team. Yep, right now there. that we see the colors, yeah. it's definitely them. Looks like Kathy in the. That's uh, Kathy in the red. Yeah. So they are getting. Uh, they're, they're planning to stand, uh, or at least uh, attempt to stand up peg leg. And that's peak. one of our shapes, and so that's a good positive sign that we're seeing the shapes begin to. Um, the. The other thing we'll see with they the wouldn't be dragging all of that heavy fabric out and getting things rigged if they weren't uh, optimistic that we're going to be doing something, even if it may prove it to only be a static display. Yep. Yeah. And just beyond them, the blue one there, I was seeing them start to stretch it out more, right. which is something you tend to see more with the shapes because they have all those appendages right. and all those other places they might have to go close. A, a lot a of times, yeah, those were opened when they deflated it last, and now in order to inflate the balloon, they've got to go around and se reseal those various, because uh, special shapes have uh, uh, usually have multiple deflation ports, whereas with uh, the Wells Fargo balloons, for example, we see now, see those red and white checkered uh, circles there at the top of the balloon, that's the parachute top, and that's basically the principle, typically the only deflation port on a round balloon. You pull that top down into the balloon, it opens up a hole at the top and the air rushes out. But on special shapes, uh, you know, those animals that have, they have feet and, um, you know, wings and things like that, well, a lot of times there will be, in addition to a main deflation port, a parachute top, there will be uh, deflation ports, uh, basically just openings that are sealed with hook and loop fastener, Velcro to use the trademark name. And um, those have to be opened to get all the air out of the shape when you deflate it. Some teams will reseal them once the balloon is deflated so they're ready for the next inflation. Most probably um, do as Art was saying, they have to spread out the fabric find those deflation ports and reseal them in order to then crank the inflator fan and get the uh, envelope to uh, to fill with uh, ambient air. So that um, that's why we may see a lot of these teams. But again, it's a positive sign that we're seeing these special shape teams uh, get the envelopes out and get them rigged. They would not be doing all this work if they were not um, fairly optimistic that we are uh, we're going to be able to do something this morning, even uh, perhaps should it end up being just a uh, static inflation where they stand the balloons up and just leave them on show but which don't fly. Which is great fun anyway. Because it really now, is. Yeah, I mean, you I mean, can't get pictures of 100 balloons all taking up and going away quick no. enough if they stand here. Well, Boy, the, we're going to be able to just, you're going to be able to get it, walk down a little bit, get another and one. And for the spectators, it makes the, sh it's kind of like Sunday morning when we had the fog. It's disappointing yeah. when you don't fly. But sometimes the show for the spectators is much even better. greater. But one, it lasts much longer. Yes, the balloons does. will stay here for two or three hours sometimes, depending on their fuel capability. And, um, uh, and and so you can, as you say, you can just visit from balloon to balloon to balloon. Get those Get all those cards. pictures, get trading cards, that sort of thing. Uh, whereas if, if they're inflating, uh, once they inflate and launch and fly away, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of times a static display, especially of special shapes, you know, yeah. Maybe not so much round balloons to a certain extent, you could argue, but uh, for special shapes, to have all of those uh, crazy, <laughs> um, wild and ludicrous shapes down there just standing there, and you can wander around and ooh and ah at them to your heart's delight. Uh, there's Scott Woogie, the gentleman in the red jacket doing the talking there. Great shot inside the basket from yeah. the burners, and you see the inflator fan is in place, ready to go. Scott's uh, daughter, uh, earlier this week, Kim McGee, uh, was awarded the BFA's highest honor, the Shields Trogger Award, for two uh, world record flights that she did earlier this year. I forgot she set multiple um, national and world records um, in, in, a, in two separate flights. One was in a little cloud hopper, and then one was in a small 42,000 cubic foot balloon. Uh -huh. um, and so well done, Kim. We're all very proud of her. You betcha. So we, you just mentioned uh, Scott Woogie there that the uh, balloon would be Lindy if when when they get to oh, stand it right. up. Oh, that's right. He's yeah, flying I, Lindy I, for I us. Forgot that. I should have remembered that because Scott came up to me early on this week and gave me a Lindy pin and apologized. He said, I know I missed you last year. I kept trying to, to get to you, never could. <laughs> so um, he was at the uh, BFA president's reception Thursday evening before we started Fiesta. And so he came up and said, I want to make sure I give you a Lindy pin this year. So thank you, Scotty. Okay, you just heard that probably. Balloons of the day will not be flying. Just 
So we'll we'll have the national anthem here in just a couple of minutes. But, but we, just, uh, we will we not launch a balloon with the flag this morning. With the uh, yeah, the Wells Fargo folks are planning to uh, just stay on the ground. Yep. And that's not really a surprise. I think you and I have been expecting that. I think we'll have to hold Ruth until after the anthem. We're just within a minute or two of doing that. Um, so and I just heard Henry Rosenbaum on the uh, pilot radio tell them the same thing that we just heard over the officials' radio. We're still optimistic to be able to stand the balloons up, but the Wells Fargo balloons will not fly. Okay. All right. So we we should be just uh, upcoming in just a few, maybe just seconds now. So in the meantime, the, uh, we've got anthem. yeah, we've got uh, crews here. I see the uh, Zia jackets there, and mm -hmm. then in the black jacket, yeah. that's uh, John Bolger. He's uh, been flying one of our XTO balloons. Oh, for okay. Us. There's one of the shapes because you can see that might be Osito Bimbo. See that big, great big yep. cart with the white in it there? And then the ground tarp. And I know they use a red ground tarp. So they are going to let them go static, but not fly. Right, they are, they are going to go cold and then hot inflate and static display, which means staying on the ground. So at this point, no flying um, at this early stage this morning. Looks like they were getting a choir ready to do the national anthem down there. Looks like maybe a youth choir from what I can see. So we're about, we're just talking with the officials of the stage. We're about a minute away from the national anthem. And we have a, a great group going to be uh, performing the national anthem for us this morning. <laughs> the New Mexico Philharmonic Young Musicians. I was going to say, I thought I saw them. Uh, I thought it was yeah, a choir, but it's musicians. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. And someone here just says the balloonmeister cursed them <laughs> yesterday. Remember how uh, Henry was ever talking about how we'd flown every flight? Yeah, you know? he did. <laughs> so he jinxed us. <laughs> We uh, we'll point that out to Henry privately. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you had attention uh, your attention to the stage, here is our national anthem presented by the New Mexico Philharmonic Young Musicians. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem performed for us this morning by the New Mexico Philharmonic Young Musicians. Here on Kids Day at the 48th Annual Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Canon, we are Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by XTO, a subsidiary of ExxonMobil. We thank them very much for making our live stream possible, both on Facebook and YouTube. And, of course, you can always get us 
uh, archive shows as well by checking out those places by just going to balloonfiesta.com. We mentioned today is Kids Day. We had a great performance just moments ago on the stage, and Ruth Lind has managed to find a few spectators that happen to be of that kid era. Oh, I like Ruth? That. <laughs> That's right. I'm down here with Talon and Benjamin, and they are here for Kids Day at Balloon Fiesta. Talon, is this the first time you ever came to Balloon Fiesta? Um, yeah. And what do you think? What do you like best so far? Um, the balloons. Wow, that's a very good answer. Do you have the day off from school today? Uh, yeah. Are you coming back out tomorrow? Yeah. Well, that's good. Benjamin, what do you think? What do you think about all this stuff? It's cool. It's very cool. And their brother Griffin is here now, too. Griffin, how many times have you come out to Balloon Fiesta, and what, what's it like for you? Um, it's fun. Well, I guess that's what is going on here at Kids Day at Balloon Fiesta. Back up to Glen and Art. So it's cool, it's fun, and we love the balloons, and hey, we love the kids as well. And we'd like to just go ahead and remind all the kids that are here, if you haven't yet stopped by the main stage, just a little bit south of it there, we have goodie bags for all the kids 12 and under. Goodie bags from Phillips 66, from Delta Dental, from General Mills, at KOB TV4 have all contributed goodies inside the pack, including cereal and then, of course, the things that you need to take care of your teeth afterwards, from a toothbrush to toothpaste and floss. I mentioned the cereal. There's trading cards in there. We'll give you some cream line milk as well, and so that you can enjoy the morning here at the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta Kids Day. Again, kids 12 and under, stop by the main stage just a little south of it. Pick up your free goodie pack thanks to Phillips 66, Creamland, KOB, Delta Dental. Probably missed a couple, but the uh, General Mills, thanks to all those who contributed to that and who have contributed to it for years uh, in the past. Mike, check. There we there are. We I think I, I tripped over the cord and I unplugged myself there. Oh, there you I go. I was going to say, those great sponsors saved me a trip to the store today because I literally just ran out of toothpaste uh, this morning. So um, I was going to have to go get some. And since you got one of those uh, goodie bags, I now have what appears to be a nice uh, fresh mint kids. But that'll get me through the rest of Balloon Fiesta well, and back home go. on Tuesday. So we saw the uh, Intel balloons standing up. just uh, And I, that's probably their crown line that we're looking at. They're holding on to the handle there. That rope would be attached to the top of the balloon, providing some level of stabilization against the wind. You see they actually put two people out there on that crown line this morning. So who brought the cookies? Did the, did so the cookies came from my good friend Cindy Everest. Uh -huh. um, she has uh, become addicted to ballooning and especially she's the gas cookie, ballooning. She's the cookie lady. Uh, no, no, but she's the one who brought us our cookies. Okay, because Cindy's been on our feed for uh, a long time. She, uh, well, because there I was used to a work lady with her at Apple. Here is, uh, that's not the one. It's not that lady. Not, it's th not that, that cookie lady. Okay, because I nope. bumped into her the other night, and she said, do you remember me? And I, and I thought, well, no. And I'm the cookie lady. And I went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had mentioned she had cookies again this year. Not the one. Cindy is a okay. uh, great well, friend of mine. Uh, thank you, Cindy. We used to, we used to work together um, at Apple till she retired. She lives in Placidas here. She has been tuned into our Facebook live feed um, oh, since day one. She was texting me last night. Do you think Andy Caton can get that extra 45 <laughs> kilometers? I said, yeah, I think so. He's pretty hungry to get there. And then as soon as the tracker updated and he clicked over, she's again texting me saying, he did it, he did it, he did it. So that uh, so she's here today with some friends from Washington State. Well, it looks like she just brought us some wonderful chocolate chip cookies. So um, She told me what they were, and I've... Unfortunately, forgot. But okay. Well, as soon as I taste them, they're they've got some uh, wonderful flavors in them. Pumpkin and to, some other things. Oh, so can't wait to give them a try. Thank you yeah. for those. So um, uh, she's the one also that uh, grabbed that screenshot of the poem we had from yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we both posted that. I know I did. And um, 
uh, have had a lot of great reactions. I put it up on my Facebook page and my Twitter feed. Uh, a few moments ago, we had a shot of some of the balloons inflating, and among them was Wes the Wolf. And uh, there he is. There's Wes. Wes. <laughs> Easy Wes. for you to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Wes the Wolf. Uh, Wes the Wolf. Um, and they are one of uh, many special shapes brought to us by uh, our good buddy Andrew Holly, who was with us here on the tower yesterday. Ashley Moore is flying Wes the Wolf, 13th year here, not for the Wolf, but for Ashley. And she is from Gloucestershire in the United Kingdom. Ruth has found some more kids to chat about and see what's cool with kids. I like light pinkish. Light pinkish, okay. That's very cool. <laughs> You're on, Ruth. You're on, Ruth. You're live. Are we ready? Yep. I'm You're live. Are we here? Okay. Well, we have more children down here at Balloon Fiesta. I'm talking to Isabella and Liliana and Antonio and their mom, Chastity. Liliana, you were just telling me about your pretty purple glasses. Tell me what they do sometimes. They color change. And what colors do they change to? Pinkish and light purplish. Well, that's very cool. Antonio, do you like having a day off from school? Yes, and no homework. <laughs> no homework. Well, that's a good one right there. Isabella, this is probably not your first time here this year. What's your favorite balloon from all the times you've come? Um, maybe like the Beagle balloon. I'm not really sure. What other ones? Um, maybe like the penguins and um, the dead cat. The cat. I like the cat, too, because I have cats at home, and they're my favorites. So are you going to be here all morning? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay, okay. And are you coming back out tomorrow? I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. So, Antonio, when you get done at Balloon Fiesta today, what does the rest of the day have coming up for you? Mm, I'm, I'm going to color my picture and then play with my Legos because I got Lego figures. Well, Legos are about as cool as it gets, so we'll let you guys get back to watching the balloons and throw it back up top to Glenn and Art. Thanks, Thanks Ruth. Ruth. That, that young lady is going to be a balloon pilot. Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to launch got, from here. No, yeah. I'm going to launch from there. Are she's we got the yeah. makings of a great balloon pilot, and, and, I, and I just thought, you know, uh, someone actually uh, sent me a message last night. Remember I made the comment about we needed an otter balloon. We were talking about the yes. uh, yeah. Long Leap Menagerie. And uh, a lady got in touch with me and said, uh, how would a sponsor begin a communication about an otter balloon? And I said, oh, okay, well, so we had a little communication last night. Uh, but I just thought uh, that young man said he was going to go play with his Lego figures. You know, Lego is, is hugely popular. Uh -huh. And you see people build, you know, everything from ships to planes to cities to animals to all sorts of things out of Lego, I, somebody surely has to build a Lego balloon. I would think so. You know? I'm trying to think there was something about that one time. There's and, Wes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that would be another great shape. Yeah, another great shape Shapes would be Shapes limited a, only by your a, imagination. A Lego balloon. Canon, of course, has their balloon up. That's jo I'm sure you mentioned that Johnny Petron while I was Actually, away. Actually, I didn't, but oh, thank okay. you for getting well, that in there. Johnny Petron with Canon, our presenting sponsor, See Impossible. And uh, just next to him was the Smurf balloon beginning to cold inflate. And we saw, we can get a better shot now of the cheetah, which is another of the uh, long lead uh, sky safari. There's the cheetah peeking over the top of uh, US Bank. Uh, Scotty uh, McClinton's US Bank balloon. The cheetah is being flown by Ian Sharp. Uh, it's his first year here at Balloon Fiesta, and he is from Caterham in the United Kingdom. I'm probably murdering some of these uh, place names over in the UK, but trying my best. We saw Peg Lake Pete uh, stretching out before. Yeah, now I see David. some cold air starting to go into it. Oh, off yeah, the there they are. They're yeah. right up close to us. They These are. other balloons are down near the stage. There's the, the cheetah. It's amazing to me how uh, Andrew and his folks have taken uh, basically just a round balloon and added a few appendages, noses and uh, ears principally, and created such an incredible uh, variety of shapes. There's Peg Lake Pete coming to life. Uh, from the cheetah to West the Wolf to the Panther, um, the penguins, of course. Um, who am I missing? Uh, Adelaide the koala. Uh, Did you get the, the guinea pig? The guinea pig, which is brand new. Yeah, they're all uh, basically round balloons, uh, standard balloons, we would say, uh, with uh, just some uh, minor appendages added, but they give them such great character and they become wonderful 
uh, special shapes. So it's good to see. And we heard Andrew here saying, I think they have eight or nine. Nine, he shapes. corrected. You said eight. He corrected I think it eight. To nine. I said eight. Yeah. He corrected it to nine. Yeah, that are all here. I think this is looking up inside Smurf. I think so. Yeah, because you see the, the blue and then the white. And you see that there's a, a couple of folks, one on either side of the throat. Well, and you can, if you look in there, you can see that row of fabric and those two look like round portholes. Right. Those are entryways. The, the, that fabric helps create part of the shape, and then the, the round portholes allow the air to flow out into whatever appendage that may have been of the Smurf to give it shape. There's Lady Jester now beginning to uh, come to life. So. A lot more of the shapes are beginning to uh, put a little cold air into their envelopes this morning. And that's the uh, the other eye there is from Peg Lake Pete, yep. which we've been talking about. Yep. Peg Lake Pete, which is a parrot pirate or a pirate parrot. Never have figured that out. There's our turtle. I think our turtle is standing up. And, oh, is. and I believe I see tall Steve in front as inflate, well. Yep. Yeah, the penguin. One of three penguins. We have puddles. And Splash, Puddles the boy, Splash the girl. Puddles was first, then came his girlfriend Splash. And then, as boys and girls sometimes do, they procreated, and, and we have tall Steve, who is their penguin chick. The strange thing is, is the chick is actually taller, much taller, than mom and dad. Back to a comment on our uh, Facebook site earlier today. Are we going to have a whole lot of Little Wells Fargo balloons after that makeout session? <laughs> well, um, you know, I was just saying we saw what happened when Puddles and Splash got together. So uh, we may have a whole bunch of little stagecoach ponies coming around. You never can tell. <laughs> Suzanne Spicer Crosley is watching. Hi, Suzanne. She and I did some ballooning together way up in the uh, Wild West, up in Wyoming some years ago. When I used to, when I lived out in Sacramento, California, the little turtle we showed a few minutes ago is actually called Pokey, from New oh, York. And Caroline Collins just says there is. I thought maybe I had seen one. There is a Lego balloon in the UK. See, I kind of. That's what I was trying to remember if I thought so or not. Yeah, and, and it says there is a small Lego balloon set. Another comment. And so see, our audience once again has come to our rescue and made us look brilliant. So we talked about them always being constantly monitoring the the winds here at uh, Balloon Fiesta Park and we've told you that it is yeah. uh, a static display at the moment right but um, look at the crowd we have on the uh, tower there we see Henry with the uh, black hat and the glasses the guy in the uh, blue jacket over on the left that's Paul Smith the executive, executive director. director all the red jackets He's are the big boss yeah. Oh, I see Sam Parks in there, the other blue right. jacket. He's the They've got a pie manager. ball now. They're going to release that uh, and let that go so that we can see what the winds are actually doing. There so it goes. So basically, they're checking now to see if winds have improved enough to allow us to fly. And so uh, we can see that it is definitely going out to the north yep. and fairly quickly. See if it gets any westerly push out toward Corrales or if it goes straight for the reservation. Yep, that's one of the things they're looking for. And uh, so that's called releasing a pie ball. We do that uh, and, quite regularly. And pie ball is actually short for pilot balloon. balloon. And in the old days, I was reading, uh, came across an article about a gas balloon race in San Antonio, Texas, back around 1918. And they mentioned uh, that literally in that case, a balloon team launched as the pilot balloon. Uh, it was a manned balloon, but they were first to launch to let the other pilots see what the winds were doing. Now we use helium-filled balloons. Well, we're looking at the shot here of Intel, and off about uh, a quarter of the way in from the right, there's a little tiny black speck up there. That is that pie ball we're being able to see on the feed here. You're going to probably have to zoom in on your screen or just kind of keep uh, an eye. But it is moving away fairly quickly, and uh, actually it's turning east. <laughs> uh, mostly north, so a little bit of variation of north here, a little bit back and forth, but definitely off to the north. There's another shot a little closer up of it. Uh, Dina Lee just commented, procreating balloons, ha ha, where would they get a room big enough? <laughs> they just Probably, do it here on the field. Yeah, that's what we have <laughs> Balloon Fiesta Park for, I suppose. Ina Vandercrantz reminding me that there are several uh, Lego, uh, Lego Lego rather balloons in the UK and in Europe. Well, we need to so have them bring them over here. Yeah, we need to get one of those over here, folks. Uh, we need to find out who those people are. And there's Yoda, Darth Vader, right behind Darth Vader, the black sheep, and the flip flops on the side. Diane Carlson doesn't fly that one too uh, too much anymore. No, she's because she's got herself she's a, got a new, new one. one. 
that's her original flip-flop balloon. There is the <laughs> the back course, side again. The behind side of the black sheep once again. We've seen more of that this week than I care to see. <laughs> the woolly bottom of the black sheep. What does that say? Made in Brazil. Brazil. Oh, okay. Oh, there's uh, sushi. If you like, if I like sushi, sushi like, like I like sushi. Yeah, sushi. one of those. Boom. Yeah, that's uh, Katie Boom. Griggs' balloon. Made there's in a better, Brazil. There's, there's a, a better shot. shot. Made, yeah. Brazil, yeah. Made in Brazil. I didn't know Brazil had sheep. Um, they have a well, lot of sheep. They in have New a sheep balloon. Well, they have a lot of sheep in New Zealand and a lot of sheep there's in... There's Michael uh, Glenn. Yeah, a lot of sheep in uh, Scotland, but didn't know they had them in Brazil. So Michael Glenn flies the baby bee balloon. Right, uh, Joelle. And as you've talked uh, multiple times, because we've seen him come over the target in his regular shaped balloon, he is a paraplegic, had a, a car accident a number of years ago, so he's in a wheelchair. The basket is not really a basket at all, but as you see, it's, it's, a, a, it's chair. a chair. Yeah, and he just he climbs out of the wheelchair and into the chair of the uh, balloon. He is the, not only um, a paraplegic pilot, he is the, uh, he's the only one in the United States. And I think a year or so ago, uh, we had um, um, a British pilot who is uh, wheelchair bound and they came over and did a flight together not here at balloon fiesta but they did a flight together here in the usa and michael and also goes around and gives uh, inspirational talks he and talks about his story and uh, uplifting hopes and things like wags. that he does a fabulous job woof. of doing that woof, woof woof there's wags wags is the new balloon of dean carlton who used to bring us one of our zebra or zebra balloons and um, we say woof because his balloon is not rough no no woof <laughs> Although this morning you might you, it might be say rut row <laughs> <laughs> rut row the winds are blowing now your the black is, sheep yeah and the nice flip flops of Diane Carlson yeah. is that walking on air is that the name of that one I think that sounds familiar I think that's I've, what that I've one forgotten was. but I believe that's true she has her new one after midnight registered as her primary balloon but it uh, it has pictures of the flip flops this actually has the flip flops all around it three dimensional flip flops Diane yeah. Carlson the owner of uh, Plano pins. The maker of all the official Balloon Fiesta pins. Including the official announcer pins. Yes. And our Balloon Fiesta Live pins. There's Adelaide the Koala Bear. Uh, actually, they are not bears. Uh, everyone calls them bears. I was corrected when at Long Leap this year because they have koalas there, and that's where Adelaide the balloon comes from. Uh, and I made the comment koala bear, and one of their staff came up to me rapidly and said, they are not bears. They are marsupials, and that is correct. Uh, but we all still call them koala bears, and since I'm not at long lead, I can call them a koala bear if I want to call them a koala bear. You'll um, just have a whole lot of comments I'll just on get Facebook. A lot of grief about they're not on bears. Facebook, <laughs> and probably uh, Steve from the long lead to staff will get on Facebook and remind me that they're marsupials. But at they least you went bears. through the uh, explanation there. But but and I used to collect them actually. I at one time. Koala bears? I, yeah, years ago. Not not the real thing. I had. Oh, okay. I had a collection of like 200 plus uh, plush koala bears uh -huh. and I ended up uh, selling a, a, a portion of that to an Outback restaurant and then I donated the rest to a children's hospital uh, in Longview, Texas. There's one of the bees laid out without yeah. any air in it. I'm guessing since we were just there with uh, Michael Glenn that that's uh, that the, might uh, be the baby bee. That might be Joelle. Well, we can tell by the color of the wings. Those are, are those the blue wings or is that tarp up there? I can't tell. Uh, yeah, I can't quite see. I Looks like blue antenna. Uh, I meant antenna, not yeah. wings, but yeah. Yeah, it looks like blue. And uh, yep. if it's blue antenna, then um, yep. that would not be... Uh, that would be Joey. That would be Joey, because we have, uh, just like with Puddles and Splash, that have a red and a blue um, scoop and throat, uh, the bees have a colored antenna to represent their sex or their gender. Uh, there is Osito Bimbo, the uh, Bimbo bear, of course. Uh, Bill Baker doing the piloting duties on that for us this week. And, and then Jeff right Lawton has Wise Owl, Wise Owl or known, known as Owlquerky. Yeah. And I think that's a Mariah. I thought that was Mariah perhaps just behind him, but maybe not. Nope. There's Tall There's Steve. There's Tall Steve. Shout out to uh, to my niece, Roma Holly, that's, uh, who's watching from home, I'm sure, this morning with Jennifer. And that is uh, Andrew Holly's wife and little girl, Roma, and uh, Andrew is piloting. There you go. Tall and Libby on the uh, left side. Oh, and the little uh, floppy thing coming out of the top of uh, Peter Procopio's Kashari. It's a uh, floppy gone. thing? Well, it's part of the headdress <laughs> of the Kachina. Is that, a, is that a technical term? It's floppy a very thing? technical thing. Okay. <laughs> 
I thought we taught you those things. Multicolor well, floppy things. Multicolor floppy things. Okay. Yeah, I got you. There's Lindy. We talked about uh, uh, Scott Woogie a little earlier. We're going to be putting up um, Wendy. Uh, not Wendy. Lindy. And then just behind him, I think, is um, that is the other elephant balloon. That's not Princess Nellie. That is, um, oh gosh. Um, elephant. No? Uh, elephant. Um, no. Um, oh. Yeah, let's find the real name here. Yeah, I know. Who can get to it fast? And, and I should, I should know that. I thought um, it was Elephant. Because it's um, no, that's that's the cat balloon. Tell me it's in here. Come on, come on. Scrolling through our spotting chart here. See, with 104, there it is. Alphonse. 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 Thank you. There Thank we you. go. From Champaign, Illinois, Max Mitchell. Max Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say Max. Is, yeah, I just found it too. Max is. is Shooting me, uh, you know, if looks could kill, he's probably uh, probably dead right yeah. now. Yeah. Because Max and I have been good good buddies for a long, long time, and, and I know that balloon well. Um, should, it, uh, though, performance this morning would not indicate so. <laughs> so uh, Wags is up. Here comes Cynthia Seal. She's up front here with us, uh, near uh, just right the, by the uh, Kashari with the multicolored floppy thing on it, <laughs> and uh, Peg Leg Pete. Uh, let's see. I'm just kind of looking around the field, see who else we can see. There's Lindy in the shot, and there's there's Lindy. It looks like he's got those multicolored floppy things coming out of his head. That's actually the Kashari balloon that is behind him, and um, that is, I think, yeah, that is Cynthia Seal coming up right just beside the two of them, right there. That gray balloon that you can see. And uh, I think that's the mouse that is, uh, let me find that. I think the, um, there's I'm our turtle. I'm, yep, I'm gonna let you take care of this. I'm gonna, I think we're gonna, we're efforting a, another first here, so. Oh my goodness, okay, well, nice seeing you. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Art's gonna, Step off set and go do something technical. I'm not sure what, but uh, I heard him talking about adapters and plugs and things, so something new is coming up. So, um, well, we just went off the shot. I was going to say, we were just looking a moment ago at the top of Tomcat, John uh, Grunberg from uh, Longmont, Colorado, flying Tomcat, which uh, will be a well known cartoon character to some of you if you're familiar with Tom and Jerry. Um, I think they legally can't name them that, but we can say that, but the balloon's name is actually Tomcat. That is, um, well, the shot behind, the balloon behind it with the brown and the red, that's one of, that's a bear. I'm trying to remember if I can think of his name real quick. Let me get back to my list. Um, and I'm not sure, that's not the guinea pig. I don't think that I see in front there. Um, so bear with me a moment while I'm scrolling through our, uh, Spotting chart here of our special shapes. Just when you got to sc scroll through 104 balloons, you have to uh, take a moment. Oh, that would be yeah. Tomcat is right there, and so of course that is uh, Terry Mouse that we were looking at uh, there a moment ago. The brown little nose that was poking up, and uh, that is flown by Derek Browning, uh, fifth year here from Louisville, Kentucky. We'll see that a little bit closer. That's La Di Da. Lotty Dotty Chicken, uh, the little blue uh, chicken that you see on the screen now. And um, yeah, and if I sound a bit distracted, it's because I'm hearing our technical team talking on the IFB in my ear and they're trying to set up uh, some sort of an audio feed and making a phone call. So I'm not sure what they're working on here, but Art is busy next to me being executive producer and uh, trying to arrange uh, something we've not uh, been able to do before. Hey, I think Peter. they're trying to talk to what the bird or the person I'm, I'm sorry, the truck was talking to Art, I thought they were talking to me. Um, I think what they're trying to do is set up a phone call to uh, one of the gas teams. Uh, I heard them mention they were calling Peter Procopio on the uh, uh, on the phone, so maybe that's what's happening, but we'll wait and see. So la di da chicken is there in front of us, the blue balloon you see there with the, the red uh, rooster comb on the top. And um, let's see, just looking around the rest of the field, Peg Lake Pete is now standing up nice and tall here in front of us. Uh, I can see uh, Terry 
uh, mouse as well as tomcat there. And Mr. Biddles, that's the, b the bear I was trying the to think The tall bear, of. Mr. Biddle. Yeah, Mr. Biddle is down there as well. So um, I think I, you heard me talk about what we have here. We've been talking well, about I, America's. I heard you were going to say you were called Peter Cuneo. I think I said Peter Procopio, but um, Peter Cuneo. And so he is part of the Team 5 America's is that we're Challenge. about to talk to one of the gas balloon We teams. are. We have Peter on the phone. Peter, are you there? So uh, I'm, are we hearing him on we're the? We're not hearing him on the air, I don't think. So I, he I heard. Yeah, but Peter, let's uh, let's just kind of test this again. Uh, can you hear us? Can we hear Peter fine? I'm I'm hearing him on the phone off to your side this here. here. So we're, we're trying to set up a live telephone conversation with Peter Cunia, one of the. Uh, uh, Peter and Barbara Fricky were Team Five, I think, in the uh, gas balloon race. Talk to me again, Peter. One, two, three, four. I am here. Can you hear me? One, two, three, four. I think we've got him now. I'm hearing him. Are we hearing him I'm, on the? Uh, I'm hearing him in the headset. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So we do have you, Peter. Thank you for calling in. We're live on Balloon Fiesta Live. Peter Cuneo, along with Barbara Fricky, Team Five, Number Five in the America's Challenge race. Uh, you are landed and driving back. Is that what I understand? That is correct, and we also have Sue and Ray Palmer, who chased us all the way up to Minnesota in the truck at this time. Well, great. So how was the flight? It was actually um, pretty reasonable, not um, any weather situations. We did have some minor thermal activity second afternoon. And, and how was the landing? Landing um, was at about 10 knots. We did it very early in the morning, be the weather conditions, and um, as a result, we probably gave up about two places in the race because we were about 10 miles behind one team and 20 miles behind another team, but we thought it was more important to have a safe landing with an easy retrieve. We actually landed in a farmer's soybean fields, and he was nice enough to bring his humongous combine out and cut a swath through the soybeans right to our basket, and we just drove the truck in behind him. Um, he was, his name was Myron Bishman, and he says he's related to a balloonist who sometimes comes to Albuquerque, whose name is Gary Bishman. So I believe that Gary Bishman um, name is familiar to me, and if so, um, your relative Myron Bishman says hello. Well, that's great. Uh, good to be able to hear that. So we have your track up here. So you had a nice, uh, pr pretty nice landing. We heard that one of the other teams landed about 30 miles an hour. And, of course, I don't know if you've probably been watching. Andy Caton is uh, up there by the uh, Hudson Bay now uh, looking that for a landing a, site. That man is amazing. He's down low and he's going really slow. And uh, I hope he's going to have a friendly polar bear to meet him up there because he is headed for an area called Polar Bear Provincial Park. And I'm going to give you three guesses what the uh, most popular animal at Polar Bear Provincial Park is. And it's probably not Provincial Park, so it's got to be Polar Bear. I, I, I'm guessing it's not um, aardvarks either. <laughs> there you go. So where are you on the way back? What, uh, where, where are you about? We had a really nice, um, by the way, we landed in Princeton, but it wasn't Princeton, uh, New Jersey. It was Princeton, Minnesota. Um, we are heading south from Minneapolis to Kansas City. We're about 185 miles from Kansas City, according to our GPS. We're in clouds, um, but not rain. Um, it rained overnight. We're expecting to get some rain on the road and we're probably not going to do this all in one day because according to our gps if we drove straight through with no stops we would be in albuquerque at three o'clock in the morning and that doesn't sound so good to us so we'll make probably a stop somewhere along the road on the way back um sounds like a sounds like a great plan well you guys thanks for calling in hi to uh, barbara ray and sue uh, you guys uh, drive safe glad that you had a wonderful flight with a safe landing We'll uh, chat with you when you get back here in Albuquerque. Thank you, sir. Bye, Kim. Bye, Thank everybody. <laughs> All righty. So there so, we go. Another first for our uh, live broadcast from uh, Balloon Fiesta Live, sponsored by, or powered by, I should say, XTO, a subsidiary of Exxon Mobil, and Ruth Lind is down amongst all of the special shape characters on the field with uh, some guests. So, uh, Ruth, take it away. 
Actually, I'm up here behind the Gondola Club with oh. Joey. Joey is a courtesy driver. And I know we've all seen these courtesy golf carts riding around, and what they do is provide complimentary rides to people on the field, to and from parking, to help them get where they need to go. Now, Joey, you said this is your first year doing this job. Tell me about what that's like. Oh, it is so exciting. I, I have not wiped the smile off my face since I started five days ago. We meet so many interesting people, and uh, the excitement of a first-timer that's coming to this brings me back to my first time that I've been here. And who are some of the people that you've been talking to? Tell us about some of your passengers. Well, one of my favorites was yesterday. I actually got um, a couple that had just gotten married, and they were on their honeymoon here and uh, enjoying the balloon festival for their honeymoon. It was just, it was so sweet, you know, that they had chosen this spot to come. And you always ask people where they're from. Can you give us some examples of guests you've had from different places? Oh, I've had people from Vermont, Pennsylvania, Alabama, Georgia, LA. Uh, they come from all over. I, I don't think that I've had an international one yet, but I think my husband has. <laughs> so, But we just from all over the place. And they're interesting, like this one lady from Vermont, she used to work for Ben and Jerry's, and she was telling me all about the tours of how they, uh, they enjoy that particular service there. Well, that's just terrific. Joey, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Balloon Fiesta Live. Will you give me a ride back to our cart now? Absolutely. <laughs> back to you guys. Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> we got that thanks, Ruth, down really well, yeah, don't we? Yeah, we do, actually. And, and Ruth always gets, sometimes gets confused pitching back to you or to me, you thinking we're each other, but that's cool. Our good friend Keith Berry made it to town. We've been chatting with him online. He's been watching all week. But and yeah. uh, he's here with Spidey Pig. I uh, got a chance to talk with him yesterday. He said, occasionally I get confused with uh, your two voices as well. See, I, His I've wife, a, on the other hand, she's got it down. She can, she knows who's who. We've had a number of people commenting, uh, both online and in person, to us that uh, they think we sound alike. They have a hard time telling us apart, and and I don't. I think I don't either. I think we have two very distinctive voices. Even listening back on the playback exactly. of, uh, of the shows. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Uh, so I don't get that, but um, you know that's cool. It's not a problem. That's it. We're good. So if you don't like what they said, what we said, it's Glenn who said it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Throw me under the bus. Uh, obviously, with the discussion, uh, when Ruth brought up Ben and Jerry's, there's now discussion online about uh, the Ben and Jerry's balloon. And uh, years ago, uh, gosh, long time ago, I was in California, so that means it was in the early, late 80s, early 90s, I was uh, the announcer at a ballooning event up in Vermont, and we were very nearby, and so I went by and took a tour of uh, the Ben and Jerry's factory in um, yeah, great memories of Ben and Jerry's. And they ha they do have a balloon. Someone here says Phil Gleave has it. I don't know if that's correct or not, but uh, there was a Ben and Jerry's. It was a uh, it was a cone, as I recall, because I think Paul Petron flew that a few times. And it's been here to Fiesta in the past. So someone was saying about, and I'm not sure if it was part of that conversation or not, about checking it out in the Balloon Fiesta program. All of the Balloon Fiesta programs, all the way back from the first original one, which was about four pages of mimeographed um, text, right. are online on BalloonFiesta.com. Oh, I didn't know that, because I've uh, got a collection of about 30-odd years of them. A couple of home. years ago. I haven't got this year's. I've got to get down there and find one before they sell out. Um, a couple of years ago, um, we took on a project. My wife and I took on the project to get all of the programs online. So uh, we, Fiesta obviously had one of every, and we took and we digitized every one of them. They are online in a place under merchandise called the Collector's Corner. So you can go to the Collector's Corner on BalloonFiesta.com, go down to Programs, and then there is a digital replica of every single program, including this year's, actually. I'd love for you to buy one from this year if you're around, but if uh, you just want to check something out, you are able to uh, go back and see those. We actually used that project the, uh, shortly after it was done to go back and put all of the pilot names that were in the program into a database. Oh my gosh. So we, uh, we're continuing to try and do a number of uh, data projects that basically document Balloon Fiesta over the last 48 years as we approach number 50, we'll have that information. So I had a number of great volunteers help uh, get those into the database. Other things in the collector's corner, you can see all the bumper stickers 
with all the themes we've had over the years. We haven't had bumper stickers for every single year, but we've had them for most of them. There are pictures of all the bumper stickers there as well. And we have, I would like to say all of the pins, but I have to tell you it's not all the pins. There are just way too many of them, and many from the early years have gone missing, at least from our collection. Um, I don't think we even were collecting them at the time. But uh, there are, um, I've forgotten, it's something like 5,000 pins with uh, wow. pictures of the front and the back. And then you, we had took a picture of it over a grid so you get a relative size. They're sorted by categories and by years. You can search that. So again, balloonfiesta.com, collector's corner. You can see all of the programs, the bumper stickers, a huge majority of the pins. My next project is to get the posters up there. Well, and I, I know I owe you, talk about not having all the pins, I owe you pictures of uh, a lot of my early year announcer pins before we, we, we began doing official announcer pins. Right. Uh, I used to do them on my own uh, initially when I first started back in 1990, and then eventually I combined them so that the pins said Glenn Moyer, Tom Rutherford, because Tom was the original voice of Balloon Fiesta and was... Uh, uh, I partnered with him for 25 years, right. and so we did our own pins uh, for a number of years through uh, Diane Carlson at Plano Pin Company, um, and uh, and then just in the last several years now, we finally uh, worked our way up to where we're now considered one of the official pins, and uh, so Balloon Fiesta creates the announcer pin as an official pin, and you have all of those, but I know there are some of my early ones that you probably don't have in that collection, and uh, I do have extras of them at home, and so one of these days I'll get around to in the non-ballooning season sometime when it's a cold wet rainy day at home when it's really dreary outside then I'll um, sit in the house and take pictures of all those balloon pins for you. Well, that'd be great. We concentrate on the official pins but when there is yeah. an official oh, pin with unofficial pins we try to put the official unofficial ones in there as well. Right. Well this so way we you can kind of see that. Yeah, see the that official progression. announcer pins and then see, go back to look at the progression where they originated. Exactly. Um, from uh, my original uh, individual pins. Someone also commented, uh, said, hey, is that Winnie the Pooh I see on, on screen? And no, it's not. What you were seeing was Biddle, uh, Mr. Biddle, the, uh, the big bear we were talking about, um, that is uh, piloted by Josh Sneed. Josh is a brand new member of the Board of Directors of the Balloon Federation of America. And when I leave here on Monday, I drive home Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll get to, to pet my kitties. I get to see Bonnie and Ranger for one day, uh, do laundry, repack, and then Thursday, I'm off to uh, Austin, Texas, or I think it's actually Liberty City, for a brand new balloon event that Josh Need has put together there uh, to do that. And um, then I get to drive home after that event and uh, see the kitties for a couple of days, do laundry again, and then return to San Antonio, Texas, actually to shirts. Uh, where Steve Lombardi has an event, and I'll be announcing that for the first time this year. So two new events for me coming up in Texas, and you'll be venturing to Texas next year for the first time officially, officially. as the new voice of the uh, Plano Balloon Festival in Plano, Texas. Be uh, actually uh, probably do a couple of events in Texas, and I've got one in Oklahoma as well. That's right. I always do Colorado Springs, the right. Labor Day liftoff. And actually next year, we're adding one in Phoenix over Thanksgiving weekend, oh, actually brilliant. Scottsdale. So the Phoenix Scottsdale area, Scott Appleman, who puts well, on Labor Day liftoff, is adding one Thanksgiving in the Phoenix area. For a number of years, Scottsdale used to have uh, the Thunderbird Classic. Yeah. Uh, because I was yeah. out as the announcer of that one year. And uh, but that event kind of went away through the through the years. Kind of so moved around town. Back. Went from Scottsdale to Glendale, and yeah. there's a couple of other rallies and things like that. Yeah. Scott Appleman has taken on the uh, challenge of bringing it back in Scottsdale, and so Skyfest Scottsdale, I think, is what he's calling oh, it. Oh, outstanding! Well, that's good. So that'll be uh, Thanksgiving like weekend, starting 2020. Always like to see uh, new balloon events coming online. Uh, it's always great for the sport to bring our our sport out to uh, new. Uh, new pastures, as it were. So a couple so of updates that have come through uh, while we've been chatting uh, about lots of things. Competition officially canceled today, okay. as you might have expected. Not, not surprising, because and that was later in the morning. Right, but now that we're going to have a static display, so with with competition canceled, we uh, yeah, we'll get him. Okay. We have all the... Uh, we have someone who could tell us why. <laughs> <laughs> all the, uh, uh, the regular shapes I see are starting to uh, stand up over on the west side of the field. We're going to have a static display here is what we're going to end up having. So um, no launches. We're going to stand the balloons up, 
let you uh, see them up close and personal and as close as we can bring them and as many of we can bring them to you here on Balloon Fiesta Live. And while you say, man, why aren't they flying? It's so calm right here. That is the, uh, that is the point. And the guy who's going to explain all that to us um, is a gentleman we saw live on Balloon Fiesta Live earlier this morning, uh, and that is our weather guru, the one, the only, the honorable, the right honorable, uh, Mr. Brad T. Meyer. And uh, good morning to you, morning, sir. Guys. How are you? I'm so great. How are you? Uh, yeah, we're good. We're, we're great. Good. Explain to the folks kind of what you told everybody at Pilot's Briefing was going to happen. What's going on? Could yeah, so basically uh, we have we have a, a, a period right now that looks just picturesque, right? We've it got the balloons Picture standing. perfect. Yeah. Picture perfect, yeah. Yeah, the balloons are just standing up and, and sitting there really, really nice right now in the wind. But just a few hundred feet above the surface, the winds are moving at 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, 15 to 20, actually. And uh, as soon as, if we allowed the balloons to take off, they would very, very quickly uh, move to the north. The bigger concern for us, though, is how those atmospheric conditions are going to change over the next hour. Right. So right now, it's, it's, it's quite nice, but we are expecting those winds just above the surface to work their way down to the surface, probably about 8.30 or so, so in, in about an hour. And uh, when that happens, the winds on the surface would pick up very, very quickly. And if we allowed the balloons to fly, it, it could become unsafe at that point. We talked about that earlier this morning, uh, right after we heard your briefing uh, to the pilots, that it's not just an issue of is it, is it calm or are the winds light enough for us to fly? We have to look at, you have to look at, what are the conditions going to be an hour, two hours, three hours down downrange from now? Because it's more a concern of, we can get them in the air, but we have to get them down on the ground safely. And the winds, we, we knew that, that that mixing would take place, wind speed would pick up. So one of the considerations you and the other officials have to take in, in the, into consideration is what are the winds going to be doing when landing? So you're right, people seeing us online, looking at these pictures saying, well, my gosh, it's beautiful. It's calm. They're all standing there nice and easy. Why aren't they flying? Right. Yep, and, and, and the conditions are just going to rapidly de deteriorate on us. Yeah. And so it's just it's, it's in the best interest of, of us uh, this morning just to stay on the ground. But we can still we can still take advantage of these conditions while we have them uh, and, and still uh, get the balloons out, inflate them, and, and, and do a static display on the field for everybody who's come out here to see the balloons. It's, it's, it's still a, just an amazing sight just to see and interact, see the balloons and interact with the pilots. I mean, you know, on days when we get to fly, the pilots get, <laughs> Get in the, the balloon field, and go right. away. They're right, away, exactly. They're but here. This is the opportunity where you can go yeah, up and, and have a great conversation and, and talk to them about how long they've been in the sport and, and some of the adventures that they've been. Well, and that's one of the great differences or one of the great advantages to the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta is that this is one of the uh, one of only a handful of balloon, uh, ballooning events in the country that allow the spectators out onto the field. You can go out and you can walk freely amongst the balloons, go basket to basket, collecting cards getting autographs, chatting with the pilots and the crew. A lot of events, even if they were doing a static display like this, the crowd is held behind crowd lines. They're not right. allowed to go out. Right. They have to sit and watch like a parade going by. This way you can get out there and walk amongst all the parade floats. Yeah, and, and visit with the pilots, you yeah. know, and, and, and it's really, Awesome, just to talk to so many different people to see what they're, where they came from. You know, people travel for days just to come here and fly in Albuquerque because it is such a special place to fly. And some people come out, of course, and especially on Special Shape Day, uh, they have their own uh, favorite special shape. You know, so many are fans of Darth Vader and Yoda, or maybe they're a fan of, um, you know, Lottie Dottie Chicken or whatever it may be. And everybody has here, a favorite. Everybody's got a favorite, but they come out and, and they're at the wrong part of the field at the moment when that balloon flies away and they go, oh, there goes my balloon. Right. This way, y you might be at the south end of the field and, and realize, well, Darth Vader's down at the north end. Let's go see him. And you can walk down there and he'll still be there. Exactly. He doesn't fly away yeah. and, and wave goodbye to you. So in, in a lot of ways, we hear comments all the time that it's always disappointing when the balloons don't fly but in a lot of ways, it's actually a better show for the public and the people enjoy it, it more when we keep them on the ground like this and yes. they can walk around and see everything up close. Yeah, the conditions over the next hour will be really quite good for this. Um, thereafter, I'm expecting winds to pick up fairly quickly, so this is the perfect time to get out and visit with those pilots that, uh, that are going to be of your favorite balloon, you know? So looking ahead, what's the forecast look like <laughs> for the uh, yeah. for the rest of the now event? Now for the bad news. So <laughs> we are looking at some major changes coming through here. We have a cold front that's just going to be working its way through probably in the next couple hours. And once that does so, winds will be really increasing. 
uh, out of the northwest, and they'll be strong throughout the day today. Um, and so that we'll have to be really be watching those winds later on this afternoon and this evening for the potential for that globe later on uh, today. However, I do expect the winds to drop off overnight tonight, and it should be really, really nice by tomorrow morning. The difference will be, uh, for those that are here, about 30 degrees. Yeah. So by tomorrow morning... And not warmer. Right. No. <laughs> so, so we're currently uh, running right around 60 degrees or so. I mean, it's really, really nice. It is, it nice. is nice, yeah. Uh, tomorrow morning, we will be running near 30 degrees. So the heaters on the South Tower will be working overtime, oh, right? Oh, very much so. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. will be extremely cold. But uh, it w it'll also be ideal conditions uh, for us to radiate out and, and keep the stronger winds aloft. And so I think we'll have another great, fantastic day here at Balloon Fiesta again tomorrow. And that will continue into Saturday and possibly into Sunday as well. Well, and of course, balloons fly by variant of the temperature inside of the air, inside the envelope of the balloon and the ambient air. So really, uh, I know from my flying days, colder air, the balloons perform so much better. It's so yeah. much nicer flying in 30, 40 degree weather than it is at home in Texas in 100 degree weather in the summertime because the balloon just responds so much more nicely to the burner. Yes. And it really is much more fun to be a pilot and fly in colder conditions. Yeah, they'll be using much less gas. Absolutely. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> much less. You just yeah. don't have to heat the balloon up that much compared to the outside temperature. To and get or it. put right. more people in the basket. Uh, That's up, possible. Up, yeah, up yeah. that as well. So the bad news, we've got a, a front coming through. The good news, it's coming through fast and yes. it's going to be gone quickly. Yes, and so it looks like it looks like great opportunities to, to uh, still get the balloons out and fly uh, Friday and Saturday for sure. Excellent. Outstanding. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, absolutely. Always uh, great talking with you guys. You bet. And we uh, appreciate it being up there to see the uh, weather briefing this morning and all the graphics you share with the pilots. <laughs> it, it was. was it was great to have you guys. And you know, one special thing that we're doing this year that we haven't done in years past is NOAA is on site. They're running a drone for us. And so I showed a couple of those graphics yes. this morning to, with the pilots. Um, the data that they're getting is absolutely fantastic for us. And it's really helping in the decision making uh, that we're doing to keep the, the, the both the pilots and the spectators well, safe. Before you leave, tell us about your weather hel helper. You had, yes. a, you had a young man up there from Korea today South Korea, who was helping to launch your pie ball? Has that been going on? Is that happening all week? How Absolutely. That? So that's something new that, that. We're, we're doing this year as well. So we pick out a, a young child from the uh, crowd throughout the day, er, every morning, and they come up and they help us with the uh, pie ball launch. What the pie right. ball is, is it's a balloon that we just follow uh, and, and just try to see what the winds are doing just above the surface, where the balloons would be flying. And so it's just a helium balloon that we follow and we watch it very closely and we can kind of see what direction it's going and how quickly it's moving away from the field. And uh, it's great to uh, have extra help every morning. So, so we have an official weather helper each day that comes out and helps us with the pie ball launch. And it's these great. are just young people that you sort of pick randomly, randomly out of the crowd? Randomly the crowd, absolutely. I've seen some pictures of previous days up there, and I, that's how I, so I picked up on it, so it was great to see that as well. It's a great thing to do. Oh, it's wonderful so to have. Just be sure you launch the pie ball from the right side of the tower. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Otherwise you might hit things on, the, on your launch, and that's not always good. Yeah. Yeah. That was that's quite, a, quite a moment this morning. The pilots yeah. got a good jolly out of that. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it was good to see all them out there as well. So, Brad T. Meyer, thank you very much for joining us up here again. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll be talking to you later on. Sounds great. Okay. So there's the, uh, there's the word, we, uh, the explanation of why we are standing up but not flying today. So winds at the first 150 feet or so, nice and calm. Once you get 115, 150 feet or so above the ground, the winds pick up to 15 or 20 miles an hour, Not, and that comes down to the ground, so not safe for flights. But it is uh, a great time for a static display. We'll continue to show you the different balloons as we pop them up and can see them. I see Smiley Scarecrow coming up uh, right in the center of our screen. Uh, Osito Bimbo, the white that is in the back. There's the barn off to the right. Looks like that might be a one-eyed jack to the left of Smiley Scarecrow. There's Spot the Wonder. In addition to this being Special Shapes Day, we have our many of our regular shaped balloons standing their balloon up for your display as well. Uh, coming across the left, I see the uh, Maze for, uh, uh, Frost Realty Group. Easy the for you to say. Boat. Yeah, I had to think about that because it's not there on the screen. 
And uh, then I also saw um, Judy Nakamura's balloon bounce, the yellow one that was there. There's the backside of Osito. And there's Pico, the blue one. Let's see. That, the upper right, those little things hanging down in the corner, I think that's the bottom fins of Scorch. <laughs> well, look at what's uh, there. I mean, no, that, I, yeah. I, I'm not laughing at that. I'm sorry. I'm oh, laughing. you're laughing at, at the feed stuff? I'm laughing at one of the comments on the feed. Uh, Are they Jim, making fun of us again? They're making fun of me. Jim Jellison says, Glenn, you need to wear your kilt tomorrow. It ain't happening. Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> that ain't happening, not in 30-degree weather. <laughs> Uh, oh sure. That's that's funny. That, that that's a good joke. What we'd really like happening. what we'd really like Penny to do is to turn the balloon around so that we can see the uh, logo on the banner on this side. So if she could rotate it 180 degrees, I know that turns the scoop the wrong way, but we'll see if they can get that. The XTO balloon, XTO of course, powering Balloon Fiesta live. Absolutely. And uh, Tristan McLean was scheduled to fly that balloon all week. Had a little incident with his crew after that first fabulous flight. They got a little <laughs> Uh, overzealous in their celebrations and uh, yeah, bro managed to knock him down and break his collarbone. Yeah, they sent their pilot to the ER after having a great flight. So, <laughs> so we've uh, had some uh, Ted Mays step in the last three days to fly our As Time Flies balloon, sponsored by XTO, and now we have Penny Subtle who is flying it for us. Somebody watching yesterday, Dan Stanley, is asking, is there a balloon there like yesterday that had that vent letting the balloon to deflate quickly? He's talking about at the end of the show yesterday, we had one of the pilots deflate his Adams pop top. And, uh, and well, that balloon is back. These balloons are here every day, and there are, I'm sure there are a few other Adams balloons out there in the crowd. And Um, Bill has actually stood up out there, so we may uh, see that again. So, so he's back. So, yeah, th- there are uh, there are balloons here all the time that have Adams pop tops, uh, although uh, th- they are becoming fewer and farther between because they're just not built l- anymore. Uh, Pauline Baker says, "Looks like the gas balloon has the last gas balloon has landed." Glenn, she's passing that note on to us. We knew they were going to, Pauline. Thank you. Uh, they were down traveling low and slow, and we had word uh, early on that that was their intention. As soon as they had enough daylight and enough dry land underneath them. Uh, they were going to land. We knew already that uh, that they have won the race. They're clearly uh, uh, far out ahead of all of the other competitors. They were the only team to fly through a third night. Uh, but thank you for that word that they are down and safe. We appreciate that, Pauline. So I think the truck is telling us we uh, do have communications down with uh, Penny down there in the As Time Flies balloon with the XTO banner. Penny, are you there? She's I am here. I'm here to burn her going there. <laughs> No, hey, welcome not, to Balloon Fiesta not, not Live. Not right now. Yeah, welcome to Thank Balloon you. Fiesta Live. I'm glad to be here. So what, uh, what's it like? It's flying? wonderful to be here. What's it like to uh, to fly Pardon? someone else's balloon? Well, I actually had the opportunity last weekend to fly another balloon. Um, my husband actually is one of the safety officers on the field, so I come out, and it was just nice that I was able to help him out and do something for somebody else. Hey, is it possible for you to uh, rotate your balloon 180 degrees? It is not this morning. Okay. We have to have we have two ti- we have to have two tie-offs, and there's no way I can rotate those and get the logo on your side. Sorry, Glenn. <laughs> it's art, but that's okay. In fact, as soon as I asked you that, I remembered that they asked you to put up two tie-off lines today. So, uh, yeah. You'd have to be rotating trucks and everything else as well. Is Tristan down there? Correct. He is not here at the basket. He's out roaming around looking at his balloon because he doesn't get that opportunity very often. You're right. When you uh, look up, uh, you just see your your balloon and what you're doing and don't get to see the rest. Absolutely. Um, They're actually going to go get him if you want to talk with him as well. When he comes back, we'll talk to him. Okay. Obviously, we do sound the like because she pitched it back to me when she was talking to you. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, thanks, Penny, for stepping in and uh, keeping the balloon up there for us. Uh, we'll get a shot from the outside here. People have seen the banner, and uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow you'll be able to uh, fly for us and get us some great pictures from the sky like we've gotten all week. So thanks again for stepping in and flying the XTO balloon as time flies for us. You're welcome, and Tristan actually is here if you want to speak with him. 
Oh, uh, we'll just wave at him. Okay. Thanks, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, the one, the other XTO balloon has turned around so that we can see that one. He has. So, tie-offs are the, the line that we connect to the, the envelope, basically the load lines and back to a truck so that the balloon doesn't inadvertently get away from us on a day like today. And uh, normally balloons will use one of those. Balloon Fiesta officials have been asking for them to use two right. um, because of the conditions. An, an extra measure of safety given the high winds we expect that might hit earlier than we expect. And uh, so you want to be prepared. And so if you tie those off correctly, you really can't rotate your balloon. You'd have to disconnect the tie-offs, rotate the balloon, reconnect them. That's not something we want to be doing. So, uh, But John Bolger's managed to turn the uh, yellow one around so that we can see the XTO energy banner there as well and the backside of that. There's Smokey Bear out there. Smokey Bear, I think, is being flown today by Dale Patton. And I pointed out before, a smiley scarecrow on the right side of the screen. And the purple thing with the yellow mohawk is One-Eyed Jack. Oh, well spotted. Well spotted. Uh, did you mention, I, I, I see Scarecrow coming up down there. Did yeah, you mention him? he's just over on the right-hand side of the yeah. screen. Okay. And I'm not sure which of our pink balloons that is. That might be um, Hi Kitty. Hello um, Kitty. Um, it's uh, It's got a different name on the front of no, it. No, it's Hi Kitty. It's Hi Kitty, yeah. Yeah, yeah the pink right. one. Yeah, as that's yeah, as opposed to Hello, that's right. Yeah, yeah. it's like Hi Karate, but Hi Kitty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ruth is back on the field. Um, she's gotten back to her own cart now and has an interview with the founder of the Great Texas Balloon Race, one of my ballooning mentors and a holder of many world records. I was, I've been fortunate to crew many of his world record flights, uh, and that is Dr. Bruce, or Dr. Bruce, Dr. Bill Bussey. Uh, Ruth, go right ahead. Dr. Bill Bussey. Bill has been around for a long time. He even started the balloon glow years and years and years ago at the Great Texas Balloon Race. And Bill and I were catching up a few minutes ago about a balloon experience we had in Jordan, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Bill, tell us some stories from Jordan that you especially love. Well, that happens to be my most favorite place to ever have flown. Uh, you've got just white, white sand, and then you've got these uh, uh, rocks that stick out of the sand that go up 2,000, 3,000 feet, and then you go fly over them and down in between them, and then you drop down and there's sand again, and you go about a half a mile, there's more rocks, etc. And we slept in tents, if you recall. And we did, not in the same tent, but we slept <laughs> in tents, and we got to meet a lot of the most lovely Bedouin people. Do you remember yes. how delicious that food was? Oh, it was awesome, and King Hussein, now I want to emphasize that's not Saddam Hussein, King Hussein of Jordan uh, came out, and they had camels and all the dancing girls, and it was just a fabulous, fabulous experience, and we were both there. We were both there, and his lovely wife, Queen Noor, could not have been more gracious and welcoming to us at the closing banquet. And she had the most gorgeous green eyes. Yes, Bill. I count on you to notice that. <laughs> I bowed uh, and I curtsied, and she said, you must be from Texas. <laughs> I recognize the accent. So. Yeah, indeed. One more thing before we go. Bill and I are both motorheads. And for a long time, Bill had a racing school, and you were telling me you don't have that anymore. Well, yes, we had it until two, my son and I, Kelly, we had it until 2010, and we sold it to Rusty Wallace. It's still going now. But we enjoyed 18 years of driving race cars at NASCAR racetracks, and it was quite an experience. So you're either flying slow or driving fast. I guess that about covers it all. Thanks, Bill, and we'll send it back up to Glenn and Art on the roof. Uh, Ruth, before you let him go, you might want well to let him hear me tell this story because um, not only is he a motorhead when it comes to uh, NASCAR, but uh, Bill, uh, I guess he used to ride Harley-Davidson's, I don't know if he still does, 
And uh, when he bought his first Harley, um, he, Harley he didn't know how to tell his wife uh, about it. So I was uh, working at Balloon Life magazine at the time, and we wrote in our April Fool's issue, we wrote a fictitious story about a fictitious balloon event wherein Bill Bussey won a Harley Davidson as first prize, <laughs> and that's how he broke the news to his wife, Kathy, that he had a Harley. For years, she thought he won it as a competitive ballooning prize, <laughs> which was not the truth. <laughs> well. That that is uh, an untrue, true story, <laughs> and it was April Fool joke in Balloon Life by Tom Hamilton. Right. My wife Debbie. I'm and, sorry, I said uh, Kathy. I meant Debbie. I uh, apologize. Yeah, Kathy Crew, Kathy and her husband Larry Crew for right. me all the time, and uh, I told her I want it, and it, I want it under protest. And oh boy, all my friends got upset because they weren't invited to this race, and I won the race, and I won a Harley. And so I actually bought the Harley, but I couldn't tell my wife. <laughs> Took her riding on it. She loved it. And about a year later, somebody ratted on me <laughs> and told her that, that I was devious, and, uh, but she liked it. So, yes, I still have that. My son and I have let him use it more than I use it. But I've been to Sturgis maybe 12 times since then, so on that bike. Oh, we we really actually enjoy that. we actually got phone calls at Balloon well, I Life. Do a lot of things. Yeah, we actually Bill got phone calls at Balloon Life after that from pilots wanting to know how to enter that race. <laughs> they wanted to go to that event, and there was no event. So, just one of the many fun stories I've had with Bill. There's a lot of them out there, guys. There are. So uh, thanks, Ruth, for catching up with Bill. That's great fun. So I just saw on our feed here that um, I think they call that high kitty. Howdy Cat in Texas. Well, that's what someone someone calls it. Howdy Cat. Okay, in Texas. I don't think I, that's. I think that's like what Bill just. I think that's a true, untrue story. Well, there you I, go. I've never heard Might it referred to that. that. But it does bring up to to memory a uh, a Facebook meme that's been flying around, um, with a uh, with a cat that looks exactly like my cat Ranger wearing a, a cowboy hat, and uh, it says that in Texas. Uh, you know, kitties don't say meow, they say meowdy. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear if you see that, my, my little cat ranger, my little uh, Maine Coon ranger looks just like that cat. I've been trying to find uh, a cowboy hat like that that'll fit him because it's just incredible. But yeah, the cats in Texas uh, don't say meow, they say meowdy. And there's Lottie Dotty Chicken. Behind that, there's Saxon, our saxophone. Our saxophone, yeah. To the left, that's uh, the armadillo. A lot of the, uh, I've just noticed while we've been uh, doing other things up here, the um, a lot of the round balloons, just the, the regular pilots that are Fiesta flyers that would have flown off the field this morning prior to the start of competition, a lot of them have taken the opportunity to inflate their balloons too. So it's not just a uh, special shape show today. No, it's just a static show. Yeah. I saw the uh, lighthouse peeking over the tops of things a few minutes ago, and off to the uh, left, there's the foot of the upside, upside down, down Humpty, Humpty Dumpty. Dumpty. Yeah. There we go. Pull back, there's and there's Pico. the lighthouse. Okay. There is, uh, yeah, there's Pico as well from um, St. Jean. And uh, let's see. Ooh, what, what, is, what is that creature over there, that one-eyed something or other? The, uh, was the big one eye? Yeah. That's one eye Jack. You see the oh, yellow okay. mohawk on the top? Okay, yeah, now I see yeah. that. Yeah. I was, I was kidding, because I said it's not the, the purple people eater, and the purple people eater is not one eyed anyway, although the one in the song is. Right. So, uh, nope. just to set the record straight. Yep, there he is. Barry Ballinger is there in um, the uh, bison balloon, the Tatanka balloon from Plains Capital Bank. And that looks like Bud E. Beaver. It was just to the left in the brown. But there's a great shot of Albert Einstein. Yeah. Gary Moore, the pilot of Albert. We've seen Gary in his regular shape timepiece a few times this so week. And the white one, the regular shape white one with the little gray and the black and then the red, that's our As Time Flies balloon. And that has been flying our XTO banner and our balloon camera. Sure, let's talk to him. He's, he's still there. Let's talk to him now. Tristan McLean, the registered pilot of that balloon, the one we talked about having a little overzealous crew <laughs> early in the week. Good morning, Tristan. Good morning, gentlemen. How's it going? Things are going great here. How's it on the field out wandering around and looking at your balloon? It's, uh, it's 
definitely a different feeling, I'll tell you that much. But, uh, you know, it's been a great morning here. You know, we were expecting some fast winds up at top of us, so it was really nice to be able to uh, at least put the balloon up in static and get that XTO banner up and, you know, really just say thank you to our sponsors who are helping out with Balloon Fiesta Live and, you know, just have been fantastic. And we actually have some of uh, some of their higher up people here today and they've been loving it and just getting some lots of great pictures taken. But it's definitely a different feeling seeing my balloon, but I got to tell you, she is really pretty. She is indeed. And I met some of those higher ups earlier this morning. I shared with them some of the uh, video that we have either taken from the balloon or video we have taken from the ground of the balloon. We have definitely had some fabulous shots on our balloon cam from uh, from you guys. Thanks uh, very much for agreeing to fly our camera all week, albeit even if you get to stay on the ground and watch now. So, um, Tristan, I, I, I have a little sense of what it's like to be on the ground and watch your balloon fly away for a few years. Uh, there have been occasions um, when I still had my two balloons that uh, international pilots, uh, I've allowed them to borrow my balloon and fly it here at Fiesta, and it was always a little weird being here on the rooftop and watching my balloon fly away with someone else <laughs> under, uh, you know, operating the controls. How's that been for you this week since you've uh, been uh, inadvertently grounded? You know, the inadvertently part was probably the scariest was that, you know, it wasn't, it was going to be such a spur of the moment thing where we had to find a pilot who could fly it, but you know, I was very fortunate to have Mr. Ted Mays step up and uh, he's flying with the Wells Fargo team today and he had some very interesting flights, I'll tell you that much, but truly it's been a blessing just to see uh, some of the amazing camaraderie that comes in this ballooning community. And, you know, watching as Ted flew it, it was, uh, it was fun watching it, and I definitely know that he cleaned my basket with some of those splash and dashes that we got <laughs> on cameras, or as you might call it, a Duncan dash. Uh, but, you know, Miss Penny Subtle took over this morning, and she has been such a delight to work with. My crew is absolutely ecstatic that we have such a fun and friendly pilot, and, you know, the crew is somebody we can't do any of this without, so it's been very important to me that we take care of the crew. and. Uh, you know, the balloon is going to be a balloon. It's always replaceable, but the crew is not, so. Well said, and yeah. we hope you heal up real quick and can get back in the air soon, our friend. Thank you. I do appreciate it. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thanks, Thanks Tristan. Tristan. Got so that down, too. <laughs> 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 We're getting this two-part harmony thing going pretty well here. We, we do. <laughs> There's Cannon, see the impossible, see impossible. Our presenting sponsor, Johnny Petra and the pilot, right behind that, the That's Lighthouse Scott Business yeah. Systems Balloon. And uh, as you said, Scott Vesley. He is our uh, Dawn Patrol show leader. Boy, did um, they have a great show yesterday morning with that formation. You know, uh, I've off. seen more pictures of that, I think, on social media than any other part of Fiesta so far this year, that formation launch. Um, and uh, I, I had a gr we had a great view of it here. We and did. I captured a little bit on video put it on my uh, social media channels and actually shared it to a couple of others. But a lot of positive reaction to that. Uh, someone commenting on Facebook, best Dawn Patrol I've ever seen. So uh, that And went if really you missed well. it, our shows are archived on Facebook yeah, and YouTube you, as well. So you go, go back, back and, and watch it. it. The good news is it's at the beginning of the show because we That's start right. at we 6 o'clock every at 6 morning. And we start with Dawn Patrol. That's our first flying activity. So go back and look at yesterday's show online and you can see uh, what was a really spectacular formation launch by the Dawn Patrol team. There's Lee Hooper in the um, emoji balloon from Lindstrand over in the UK. The pink one is Hamlet when pigs fly. That's Doug Gant from Dillon, Florida. And then uh, that is another, we've been talking about Diane Carlson's flip-flop balloon. That was the balloon before the flip-flops. The, uh, the tourist, the tourist penguin there. Snowbird. Snowbird, yeah. And uh, I believe that's Don Edwards again this year flying Snowbird is for it? us. Okay. I should check to make sure. Speaking he usually flies Edwards, that here for us. Well, and speaking of Don Edwards, earlier I saw the Shamrock balloon out there. Shout out to... Uh, um, Pauline Baker and uh, Malcolm White over in Ireland, who are not here this year, unfortunately, because of the goings on with Brexit and uh, some of those concerns. But Don uh, owned that balloon at one time, and now it is called Lucky One and flown by Daryl Tatum. And it's Daryl's first year flying here at Balloon Fiesta. So out there somewhere is a giant green shamrock shaped balloon. Another shot of. Uh Lottie Dottie Chicken on the right, Pico on the left, and our boy and girl balloons from um, from Belgium. Am I remembering? I don't know which one are you talking about. The two that I can never that I can never say the name of. Let me. Uh, 
see if I can. I'll, I'm going to have to look up their names. Okay, go ahead, because I'm not sure which ones you're referring to. There's the Suaro Cactus Balloon. I remember when um, reading about the test flights of that balloon, they flew it without the two wings, if you will, the arms on the side of the Suaro, so it was just that that rocket shape, and, and I understood it flew like a rocket, too, up and down. Um, I'm glad I looked it up, because they're um, from Canada. Oh, those are the, <laughs> okay, the I know the two you're talking about uh, now. Ons, yeah. Ons Wefke, and the other one, is, that's the girl, and then the boy There's a look is up inside. Ons Kirkle. There's a, a look up inside the POW MIA balloon. And their crew. Wynn Gustafson flew that balloon and ran that balloon team for a number of years. I'm not sure if he still does or not. I had, uh, through the years, I collected a lot of their pens. I still have them at home in my collection, of course. There's our enchanted koala on the right, the koala with the oh, sunglasses. Oh, the koala with the sunglasses, yeah. Right next to the uh, barn. Let's, let's be sure we keep it and Adelaide apart because, you know, we've already been talking about procreating balloons. We might have a little, uh, a lot of little koala babies running around. Well, the good news is, is they're what kind of they? on two different teams. Okay. One is based here and one is based in England. In England, yeah. So a little harder for them to get so uh, packed you know, in the bag together. Yeah, those long-distance relationships never seem to work out well. <laughs> what do they call a, a baby koala? I'm sure someone on Facebook will tell us. A I can't. koala baby. <laughs> well... Okay, duh. <laughs> um, no, but I'm sure there's, you know. There's a nice shot. Well, they call get a baby a nice kangaroo a Joey. So, right, what are the, you know, right. they call I know where you're Billy going. or a Bobby or a Sue or, you know, my name is yeah. Sue. How do, do you, you do? do? You know, what, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just can't think of it. But I'm sure someone on Facebook in just literally seconds will, uh, will tell advise us. us what it is. What, that, it, what do yeah. you call a baby koala? It's not a baby bear. Don't say that because it's not a bear. It's a marsupial. There's a whole meeting at the crown line. <laughs> four, four of them standing around. One of them, one of them's holding onto the crown line, and the other four are out there just chatting around. Again, that's the line that goes to the top of the balloon for some stabilization. Somebody mentioned we had a shot, uh, oh, probably an hour, hour and a half ago. Looked like a ski handle on the end of the rope. And right, that was the crew on, on, I think, on the Intel. On balloon, Intel, wasn't right? It? Yeah. yeah, it was. And so you'll either tie a, a, ro a knot or a loop at the bottom to hang on to, or you'll attach something like that. It just makes it easier to hold on in the. You're not having trying to hold on to the rope because the tendency is to wrap it around your hand. And then, of course, if it were to take off, your arm and your hand go with it, and that's not what you want to do. There's Saguaro oh. dude popping over the top of Pico and our little boy and girl balloon. So apparently I was correct and didn't know it. Several people are commenting that you call a baby koala a joey, just like a baby uh, kangaroo. Oh, okay. So joey is a baby koala. Well, I'll have to tell my good friend Joey Scarpinata that he's a baby koala. <laughs> so Ina says the little boy and girl balloons are actually from the Netherlands, and the names are uh, in the Dutch dialect. So I have the pilots listed as being from Canada, so the balloons might be from there. But uh, yeah, that or my information is just wrong in my spotter app. Maybe they moved. So the, <laughs> the, the, the consensus is that indeed... Uh, a baby koala is a joey. So thank you to our, our outstanding audience. We have we have such a knowledgeable audience base out there that uh, we know we can always count on you to steer us direct, steer us correct there, whether it's uh, where the balloons are from yeah. or what you call a baby koala. There you go. There's Jupiter Man on the left of the screen. We could have a we could have like a, a pub style trivia contest with our online viewers on Facebook, and. Um, yeah, but then they'd say there's unfair advantages over the speed of their internet They're connection. Probably so, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, there's our uh, puppy dog, Beagle Max. And there's Billy the Kid. I haven't seen Billy the Kid right on the screen, right behind Beagle Max. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've not seen that before either. Yeah, and keep the stork out of the way. The white is the wings hey, of the Hey, and the, the Billy stork. the Kid Museum is, uh, am, I, am I thinking about the right museum that's here in, in New Mexico? It is, down in Capitan. In, in Capitan, yeah. Lincoln, Capitan, Lincoln area, actually yeah. in Lincoln. And uh, my wife is from that area. And isn't there... Uh, I go, I go a smoky bear uh, was found down in well, Capitan. Yeah, but no, there's a, I drive through it every year coming up and here and going home. Uh, I didn't this year because I drove in on I-40. I was put in a basket with uh, eight fuel tanks for, uh -huh. our, for the Sky Safari team to use, and so I, I didn't want to take the back roads. But usually I come up through Santa Rosa 
and down through that part of New Mexico. And right. is it there a Billy the Kid Museum right there? There is not one in, down in that way as well. Yeah, Billy Capitan. the Kid was uh, kind of all over the he south was, uh, yeah. part of New Mexico. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, is it is it's not is it in Santa Rosa? Uh, I don't believe it's in Santa Rosa. It's, right, uh, it's gonna, yeah, look it up. There. I'm going to Google. And so uh, Albert Einstein going down, which allows us to see Mr. Fish behind there. There's the backside of Scorch, the big purple dragon. And I see the eyeballs of Saxon off to the left. It looks like Saguaro dude and the puppy behind there, little dog. Smokey Bear is off to the right. So as the uh, balloons continue to uh, stand up and take down, we're able to see different places. Fort Sumner. Fort Sumner. Fort Sumner, yeah, because you, you turn yeah. off to go to Santa Rosa. At Santa, at Rosa, Santa Rosa, you turn Rosa off to go that 40 way. and you go south. Uh, Go south down to um, Fort Sumner, and that's where the Billy the Kid Museum is. That I, I know was it wasn't Santa Rosa, but uh, yeah, but no, it was in that area. Yeah, because you drive. I take I-40 out of Albuquerque to Santa Rosa, and then turn right uh, and go south down to um, Fort Sumner, and then across, and end up going in through Lubbock and down to Abilene and all overnight there Monday night and then head home from there on Tuesday. Paul Petron has stood up the Philip 66 balloon, and there's Bezelbooth. Is that close? Belzebeth. The demon? Belzebeth. 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 I'm going to have to put that down. Belzebeth. Belzebeth. That's the demon. Hey, somebody who knows what's going on is Ruth Lynn. She's made her way back to the America's Challenge Gas Command Center for an update. Ruth. Yes, the last gas balloon has landed. They are up in what I call East Puckerbrush. They're about 150 <laughs> miles from James Bay up in Canada. And I'm here with Cliff Tveedy, and Cliff is working in the command center this morning. The retrieve for this balloon is not going to be show up in a pickup and throw it in the back, is it, Cliff? Not really. They're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they've landed in the tundra in the middle northern part of Ontario province in, in Canada. And like uh, Ruth was saying, they're about 150 miles west of James Bay, which is near the Hudson Bay. Um, we've been in contact with the Captain Stoker with the uh, Canadian, coast, the Central Can Canadian uh, Air Rescue Services and they are the ones that have, uh, basically are helping us out and taking the lead on coordinating the rescue of uh, Andy and Christoph and getting their balloon and equipment out from where they are. It's not an easy location to get into. So we're really to be clear we're looking at a helicopter retrieve uh, that is correct uh, that uh, is the only way in and out of that part of the country goodness you talked to Andy a few minutes ago how's he doing is he exhausted happy he's exhausted I think he's pretty happy to be on the ground um, a little cold up where they're at right now but they they sounds like they are well prepared with uh, with uh, winter equipment and, and that sort of thing. So it's just kind of a sit and wait right now until they can get uh, somebody out to them. That is the world of gas ballooning, Glenn <laughs> oh, and Art. Geez. We'll send it back on up to you. Wow. Thanks, Ruth. And, and thank you for answering that question. We had someone asking earlier today, how would they be, be retrieved? And, and I talked about um, my experience some years ago at Lake Powell, where one of the balloonists had to be retrieved by helicopter. And at that time, I said, I didn't think Andy and uh, Christoph would end up in that kind of situation. But lo and behold, there they are with probably, as you just heard, uh, Ruth telling us from the command center that they may in fact be looking at a helicopter retrieve and um, so there you go but I'm sure Andy is thrilled because he had said he was going to be the last man standing in this race and, and indeed uh, he and Christoph were. A uh, quick shout out to um, Ninka Boss. I say Boss, you say Bose. Um, Ninka, either you or Benny can tell us is it pronounced Boss or Bose with a long O or a short O? I guess I've never really figured that out. I've always pronounced it with a short O, but uh, she checked in and she's watching today. Oh, good. Hi, Nikki. Ninka is a great, uh, is an outstanding photographer and writer, a very talented young lady, uh, and uh, has written a number of articles uh, for uh, Ballooning Magazine, uh, as, you know, as she follows in her dad's footsteps, for sure, but uh, she's a brilliant writer. I, I still think she needs a career in journalism. She's actually, last time I recall, she was working uh, 
in kind of like the customs office for or immigration office for uh, the Netherlands. But uh, I think she's got the, the makings of a brilliant journalist. There's our three B's standing up red on our screen. Blue nose in the front would be Joey. Looks like the red nose on the left would be Lily. And then the uh, baby bee with, with the, the purple, purple on the right would be Joely. Joely. A few minutes ago, we saw Byla, the baby polar bear. You've talked about flying the polar bear, the big polar I, bear. Yeah, the, the Klondike years bear the Klondike years ago. Bear. Yeah, the yep. big, great, big we one. We saw a little picture of the little white uh, Byla, the baby polar bear. Well, and that's... Um, In uh, fact, there, there it is. Yeah, They're that's to put Doug, it down, but Doug and Patty's balloon. Yep. And what was interesting was that balloon was built and made its debut just about the same time that a little baby uh, polar bear was born at the Edinburgh Zoo over in Scotland. And I had talked with uh, Doug about, you know, did you guys try to get in touch and maybe do some promotion? And they did, um, but things didn't work out. But it was amazing because literally uh, that balloon was born at almost the same moment in time that uh, a new little, koala, a new little uh, polar bear uh, polar bear cub was born nice. at the Edinburgh Zoo. So um, funny how life works out that way sometimes. And so now we're seeing uh, Joey. The You're welcome, Nika. But how, how do you say your last name? The, the, the uh, blue antenna, Joey, is coming Inquiry, down. Inquiring minds want to know, is it yeah. boss, like, like you're my boss, or is it Bose, like the speakers? or something different in between. <laughs> Art and I are having a discussion about that, so we, we just figured it was time to ask, find we'll out. get it correct I'm sure you or Benny will, will tell us which is correct. Sure. They've been, uh, Benny's been watching all week. He has, and yeah. Been he's been, and he's been sharing our feed we with folks. We appreciate that. Uh, he and I had a, a chat the other day because he was, uh, he sent me a message just double checking where we're going to be live because we were not scheduled uh, to be on the air for the gas balloon launch when they moved it to Monday evening. But of course we were, and uh, but he did message me earlier that day on Monday saying, you know, hey, are you guys going to be on, on air tonight so we can watch the gas race? And he was quite thrilled that we were. So when I was putting um, promos together for Balloon Fiesta Live and our Balloon Fiesta TV channel here, I kept talking about being live at 6 o'clock Mountain Time for our morning events and 6.30 for our evening events and America's Challenge whenever it happened. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, they'll go off at 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, our intent was always to broadcast the launch of America's Challenge. It just so happened that we could come on at our normal time of 6.30 in the evening here in the Mountain West and bring you the uh, preparation, the inflation, and the launch of all nine teams. And again, if you just missed it, all nine teams are now safely back on the ground. Everyone has had a great flight. A uh, helicopter retrieval in the works for our apparent winner, Andy Caton and Christoph Support, Andy from the U.S., and Christoph, Christoph from, from Poland. Poland. Yeah. I was just seeing um, Kate Louise says, I love that puppy balloon. I think maybe she's talking about Wags because he was on the yes. on the screen just a few moments ago. Uh, Wags being the new balloon of uh, our good friend Dean Carlton. And um, I was talking with Dean up in Danville, Illinois, when I saw it for the first time this summer. Uh, and he said they literally took hundreds and hundreds of photos of their two family uh, dogs, golden retrievers, and kept sending them. Uh, back and forth to the folks at Cameron to do the uh, artwork. And there it is again on the screen. Yeah. The and pause side. Um, and, it, and it is so lifelike. And the nose is three-dimensional, which is why he's considered or was entered here as a special shape, um, because he has a, a three-dimensional appendage. And, um, and There's it, always it, those discussions. How much difference, how much deviation do you have to become a special shape? To become shape? a special shape, yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's brilliant artwork because I swear as you get close to that balloon, it, it looks like Wags is just going to jump right out of the balloon. It is so lifelike. It's just brilliant artwork. There's Smurf right before it, Buddy Beaver. So uh, many of our balloons are now starting to take down. If they stood up around 7 or 7.30, they've been up an hour and a half. And ah. that uh, kind of puts out the... Uh, amount of fuel that they would normally have for flight. Are you getting an answer? I am. So Ninky says, uh, uh, Ninka, I used to call her Ninky, like Heineke or, <laughs> or whatever, but it, I think it's it's kind of pronounced K. Uh, Ninka says, uh, it's not, actually she says Boos, B-O-O-S, I think she means Bose, uh, as that means angry in Dutch. So just B-O-S, Bos, with a short O, meaning forest in Dutch. So I was right. Biddy Boss. Boss. And Ninka Boss. Okay. 
to soon. Thank you, Nika. I'll, uh, I'll and good to hear from you, my here. friend. Yeah. We, we miss yeah. you and your your dad being here. Love seeing you guys all the time. You know, love what following her adventures. She travels all around the world, and uh, I love just following her adventures and reading her blog. Just a moment ago, we had a shot of the uh, balloon crew packing up the balloon. That was one of the things I always did like about Balloon Fiesta. Your crew becomes much larger in number. Not typically, it's, yeah. Typically during Balloon Fiesta. Everybody wants to come out. There's the shot I was talking about. And so there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's about ten people holding up the yeah, envelope there. Yeah, I was going to say, Pat Harwell, um, who uh, had us over to dinner the other night uh, with his crew, uh, typically at home, you know, there'll be four or five people come out for a exactly. flight. Yeah. And here he brings eight, ten, sometimes twelve people out here to Albuquerque. And so you get them all lined up there, and the more people, the less everyone has to do, and a lot more fun that we have. There was Buster the Bulldog. There's Excuse Andy me. the Ladybug behind the Smurf. Oh, you're looking at the screen. Excuse I'm me while I yawn. Screen. I was there looking uh, I was looking out at the field. I can see Shovel Man out there and the Philip 66 balloon and Paul Petron there. Uh, the lighthouse is still up. The Keystone Cop is up way down there. And um, that might be Buster the Bulldog. We may have been looking at it from our north camera. We probably were. Kids day here at the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, having a great time. Kids no. are out of school today. So and today's tomorrow. A, and tomorrow. So a great day for them to come out and see all of the fun activities. It must have been a great day for them with the shape staying on the ground. They had time to, plenty of time to wander around and uh, see all the the special balloons that we have here, 104 shapes registered for this year. 17 of them making their appearance just today just and today, tomorrow. Just today, for the first time we saw them today, yeah. Yep. So we did see a number of them as well. There uh, may be some goodie bags for kids available just south of the main stage. I said something about, I asked them to let me know when they run out, and they said, we've never had the problem of running out of them. Oh, goodness. So uh, kids 12 and under, if you haven't already picked up your goodie bag, from just south of the main, sure, we can show it again. We can do it again. Wait, that means i got to give you back the toothpaste. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, sure. So it's Here you a, go. Put it's that a back great inside the bag real quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great little uh, bag here, a little backpack with the, uh, the strings on the back. And uh, so Philip 66 providing the bag, KOB TV giving us a nice coloring chart that we can uh, go through. Canon has given us a whole creative pack of things that you can do with making your own paper balloons that way. Somebody from New Mexico is calling, but I can't answer the phone right now, whoever you are. <laughs> Sorry, a little a pack, busy. A little pack of trading cards, and of course, you can always go out and get the Balloon Fiesta Live ones from our crew. Yeah. Just stop by our trailer as well. Cereal, Glenn didn't eat that yet. No. You drank the milk, though. No, no I brought my own chocolate <laughs> milk up. Spoon. I, did, I was prepared, though. Yeah, well, you get one <laughs> you in get the a pack. spoon, but I had my own. And then there's this great little pack from Delta Dental. Yes. That, um, this is... Uh, you know, I want to make away with this. I have a lot of my cables in my bag. They're in little pouches like this. Right. But they're all black, and the inside of my backpack is black. And oh. so I always lose these. So having a nice little pack here, that you could cool. use it afterwards for yeah. pencils and things like that. But De uh, Delta Dental is providing these. And inside the pack with your uh, toothbrush. toothbrush, your floss, and, and my toothpaste. toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, what's well, become your toothpaste. You can have the toothpaste, and I'll take Thank the bag you. here. Okay, so great. You go. can have the bag. I'll keep the toothpaste. I uh, I have lots of that toothpaste that we'll just I uh, use as I travel well, around. They're and and they're it's, the, it's the convenient little travel size. Exactly. And, this, and that's what I had in my DOP kit. Um, in fact, I, have, I was traveling with a brand-new kit that um, a dear friend of mine over in Scotland gave me that's made out of Harris Tweed, and I had a little sampler size or, you know, travel size of toothpaste that I had used on my trip over there, and I literally just ran out. I used the last of it this morning, so I was thinking, well, I've got to go hit, or hit the dollar store or one of the convenience stores and get toothpaste today, and then you showed up on set with the goodie bag and showed us, and so I immediately have commandeered that toothpaste will be enough to get me uh, back home on Tuesday. Just thank Delta Dental. Thank you, Delta, Delta Dental. Yes. Delta, there's Delta. a song in there. Delta, Delta Dental. Dental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you tell it's been a long week oh, up here yet, folks? Oh, there we go. There we go. And the giddiness is just beginning. It gets worse. Trust me. It gets it will. worse. It will. <laughs> hey, we're at uh, we're at 8:30 here, and we've just got a, a few handful of balloons yeah, still handful. standing up, and uh, I suspect that they'll be um, on their way down soon, My and uh, we'll. 
So I'm thinking we're going to call this uh, done for well, the morning. Well, before we do that, let's talk about tonight and what are our plans as far as the broadcast tonight. Well, that's where I was. That's kind of where I was headed. Okay, we're going to well, stop there and sorry I interrupted. transition out of here. So. I'll just step aside for no, a while, shall for I? It. <laughs> no, What's I, the game plan tonight? Well, you're the executive producer. You're the boss. And so, um, you know, first of all, let's make it clear, nothing has been canceled yet. Uh, we we obviously know that there, as we've heard from Brad a couple of times, both at pilot briefing and in our interview on set here, we know it's going to get windy today. We know it's going to be windy through the night. So we know well, we know that's the forecast. We know that's the forecast. So we know that that throws in qu into question: Will there be a special shapes rodeo glodeo tonight? We also have the fast track skydivers doing their two jumps. Uh, one at 5 p.m. carrying in the American flag, and then their pyrotechnic jump at 7.30. We have the Afterglow fireworks. So we have a big evening of events scheduled. Yes. So now let's talk about what happens potentially with the weather impact, and from that, what does that do to our broadcast? Well, Basically, I'm asking, do I have to come back out this afternoon or not? <laughs> and the answer is yes, you do. Oh, darn. Um, okay. We, no, um, I'm just kidding. Well, I know you are. The, the, the game plan here, even setting our start times at 6 o'clock in the morning and at 6.30 at night, right. the game plan here was it's one thing to be on the field and see that things are being delayed. Right. But if you're part of the almost half a million people who have tuned in already, yeah. wondering what the heck's going on in Albuquerque, you don't know until we come on the air. Exactly. So we will still be on the air tonight at 6.30 Mountain Time, just as we have been for every other evening event. At 6.30, or hopefully about that time, we will know what the game plan is. Fast Tracks was, is scheduled to drop in at 5 o'clock. We record that. They come in with the flag. We right. record that for playback at 6.30. Then the glow should, the Glodio should start shortly after that. If that doesn't happen, we may do a candlestick. We'll have to wait and see. They'll make that decision at pilot's briefing or sl shortly after that. About the time we come on the air, well, they'll make the decision as to what they're going to actually do with the balloons. Then they'll also, because skydivers are dependent on the weather and the winds as well, a little bit different conditions, but they still have that same dependency. Right. And so um, we'll find out what they're going to do. And then you mentioned fireworks as well. Fireworks also weather dependent, but they can fire the fireworks off into winds up to about 35 miles an hour. Okay. So my guess is we'll come on at 6.30. We'll find out what's happening with the balloons and the skydivers. We'll have a fireworks show for sure. I don't believe the winds are forecast to get that high. So it may be a kind of a shorter evening tonight, mm -hmm. but we will be here and we will be able to tell you uh, exactly what's happening when it happens. We, uh, as you've mentioned a few times, we are not only in telephone, but radio communications. We've got two or three radios up here. We're, uh, we're in the ear of the officials. They'll be able to tell us, and as soon as they tell us, we'll pass it along to you. So for the moment, let me just play devil's advocate. Let's assume that the weather turns so bad this afternoon that at, let's say, 4 o'clock, the officials say, that's it, we're done, there's not going to be any activities tonight. Will we come on the air at 6.30, or will we just put a slide up that tells people the event's been canceled, or what would, what would our plans be under those circumstances? I think we'll still go on the air at 6.30. It may be a 15-minute show. We'll kind of recap where the situations are. We may know more information about the America's Challenge gas race and how the retrieve and stuff is going. We'll kind of update you on what the entire situation is. And then, of course, it's uh, – we, and we don't typically, unless – we, we know we're going to get rain and that kind of stuff. We don't right. typically do that. Yeah, but it's rare. in that case. It's rare that we cancel in advance. I, I know a couple of times, and only a few times in my 30 years here have we ever done that, and the weather's been really, really atrocious for that to happen. Right. So I don't, I don't expect that to be the yeah. case either, but I just thought for the sake of our audience, we'll be we here just at discuss that possibility if it gets so bad that they just pull the plug. Uh, early on and say there's no event tonight, the park's closed. Then we'll, we'll do something at 6.30. Um, well, I you mean, know, I guess if I... I guess I'm thinking back to Sunday, the last Sunday morning last year, it was it was raining, and we actually did the show from indoors. From inside. We moved everything inside to the uh, the lobby just off the side of the rooftop studio here and did a quick show from in there. Yep, we will do something at 6.30. It may be short, may be long, may be um, a one-camera shoot and one person. Okay. Um, we'll do something at 6.30, so we will be back tonight live on Balloon Fiesta Live. And if you're around the park and you can get Channel 28 on your television in your RV or your tent or wherever you might be, Balloon Fiesta Television is on the air 24-7 with our live broadcasts, of course. And in between our live broadcasts, 
uh, replays and all kinds of great information about Balloon Fiesta itself. And if you're watching online, uh, on your computer, your tablet, you can't watch on connected speakers, uh, just to make that clear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we're not on 24-7, but you can go back into the archives and watch uh, any of the individual early days from earlier this week. If you missed anything, you can actually go back and watch uh, our coverage from the last two previous uh, Balloon Fiestas. Balloon Fiesta Live, this is our third year doing the show, so all of the first two year programming uh, is also archived online, and so you can go back and, and watch and, and see how we've hopefully improved over the three years compared to what we did the first year when we Barb were Tomlin thinks doing this we've as done a testing. That. Yep, well, thank you, Barb. Yep, you I know bet. Barb's been having, she has her own little Facebook group and uh, has been conducting some watch parties where people can log on to her Facebook page and see the feed through that and uh, have some uh, lively chat and discussion in the process, which our audience on Facebook has been doing uh, all the time. So um, someone says, I've heard that Good Morning America is going to be there tomorrow. Are we going to be on TV? Well, uh, we're going to be on TV. Well, I don't no, know we, if we're going to be on Good Morning yeah, America. Yeah, well, that's now. what I was asking. I thought maybe... We need to get our media group to get them over here and show them how it's done. Yeah, really. Can, can have them come over and see what a professional setup looks like. There you go. So now that we've told you everything we know, and then some that we made up... <laughs> <laughs> I've always said, never let the facts stand in the way of a good story. Um, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We are Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by XTO, a subsidiary of ExxonMobil. This is Balloon Fiesta Live at the 48th annual Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. It's Kids Day here, and the fun continues yep. on the park as well. Up next on the main stage, for those of you that are here, the bus tapes. They're a uh, local band that actually performed at our music fiesta uh, last year or the year before. Ah, okay. Yeah, and we haven't talked much about that, but coming up this weekend on Saturday is Music Fiesta. So. Justin Moore, our big headliner right. with uh, Cassidy Pope and Trevor Brandon and the Neon West Band. So a great time there. We'll talk more about that. Maybe that'll be our fill tonight. Might be. <laughs> might be <laughs> something. We talk about yeah, this. we might even see if we can get one of them up to maybe do a song with us or two. So you well, never can tell. Somebody said we're a real hoot. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard us sing yet. You don't want too to. Many <laughs> <out there. laughs> too many owls out there. Too many owls indeed. Hey, I'm Art Lloyd Jr. This is Glenn I'm Moyer. Glenn Moyer. Thanks for watching us today. We'll see you again tonight at 6.30 and again tomorrow morning at 6. Have a wonderful day. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. You've been watching Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by XTO Energy, a subsidiary of ExxonMobil. Always in October and always in Albuquerque, the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta is the world's premier ballooning event. This program is a production of AIBF Inc., all rights reserved. Thanks for watching Balloon Fiesta Live.